Nothing quite like a Saturday night in Austin, Texas. And welcome back. Big 12 College Football. KSR presenting on Fox Sports Net. Let's join now the third member of our team, Eric Clemens. Eric. All right, Joel. Of course, there's been a raging debate over the importance of major sports in the wake of the September 11th terrorist attacks on America. And of course, that debate takes place right here in Austin, Texas, for Mac Brown and his Longhorns football team. He told us, yes, absolutely, college football has a place. And here's how he's handling it with his team. I really hope that this is an awakening about sportsmanship. I'm sure we're going to play hard in this game. Tech's going to play hard, and we want to win. And we're going to play as, as tough a football game as we can. But let's show respect to the other team in the game. And at the same time, that lets all of us feel more patriotic. Well spoken, Mac Brown. Well, we're about ready for football. The renewal of an intense rivalry, Texas Tech and Texas. Fans are ready, coaches are ready, players are ready. We'll be ready for the opening kickoff after this short time. Out. Mike Leach in his second season as the head coach of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Offensive coordinator for Bob Stoops at Oklahoma before he came over here. He had been with Hal Mummy at Kentucky, and he is some kind of offensive mind. Mac Brown on the other side in his fourth year, guiding the Longhorns 19 and 5 over the first three years in Big 12 conference play. And I like what Mac Brown said, the perspective when he was talking with Eric Clemens about getting back to football, what it meant overall. Cliff Kingsbury. Number one of the Big 12, averaging 325 yards a game passing over the first couple. Better first game he went deep. He better Second save game that he went right underneath. Arm. He's going to use it a lot tonight. Well, you know that was the first thing I said to Mike Leach in our meeting yesterday. Does Kingsbury ever get a sore and shoulder? He, said he is very durable. He doesn't get sore. He doesn't get really get beat up in the games, even though he gets hit a lot. Ivory McCann waiting for the kickoff. Over to the far side, it's going to be the up man took it away at the eight, bringing it back. Toby Shane over to the left side, breaking tackles, only managing the 20 yard line. And that's for Texas Tech. We'll start with it. So the Red Raiders averaging 42 points a game. First and 10 from their own 20, and a big guy, 6'4, 210 pound junior from New Braunfels, right outside of San Antonio, Cliff Kingsbury, the durable one James Lofton was just talking about. Erickson and Hyder, the experience, Cecil Richards and Keck over to the right side. Ricky Williams, four mile into the backfield, Cole Roberts, Nehemiah Glover, Carlos Francis, the wide receivers. You see all sorts of formations tonight for Mike Leach's Red Raiders. And you'll also see about 90% of the time this shotgun. Ricky Williams battling back from the knee injury, effectively running on first down past the 28 to the 29, dropped by Ahmad Brooks, who led him in stops last year. Kia Sarah starting 11 defensively for the Texas Longhorns. Redding, Gordon Tubbs, and Kalen Thornton, who had a block field goal last week. Jones, D.D. Lewis, the quarterback of the defense. Emmerich Rawls, the linebackers. Babers and Jammer on the corners. Brooks, top tackler on the team, along with Nation Basher, with those safeties. So a shot. They didn't throw on first down. Texas Tech, second in the yard. Looking for the first down, Ricky Williams won't get there. Knifing through. Derek Johnson, the freshman who has been sensational, James. Yeah, they're, they're calling this guy the next Superman. He really does have the gift of suddenness. You know, everybody can run 4-5 and 4-4, but there's something about guys when they strike a player and they just don't hit him, they hit through him. It's like driving a nail through a plank. That's what Derek Johnson does at linebacker. He is a true freshman from Waco, playing way beyond his years, and he's second on the team and tackles behind the line. Just got another. No gain on that carry. Caught it. Third in the yard. Williams bottled up. Lunging. I don't think he got there. He did. Uh, Horn, stick him. Play it tough. Number 95, Marcus Tubbs is lined up over the center. Toby Cecil. He wins that battle. And he Kaylin drives Thornton Cecil from the side. Back into the line. Watch the center just get kicked backwards. There he's getting kicked backwards. And there's number 95, Tubbs, and his buddies. 
Kalen Thornton coming in on that play, and Maurice Gordon from the other side. Clinton Greathouse will punt it away. Nathan Vasher, seventh best in college football. Almost a 17-yard average. You'll stay away from it. Let it roll inside the 30, and what a roll for Greathouse. A good punt for the Red Raiders. And Texas will have it first and 10 of their own 20, just like the Red Raiders did offensively after the 51-yard punt. Offensively, Kia Sarah's starting lineup for Texas. Chris Sims, 3-0 this year, 8-2 as a starter. He can see over the line at 6-5. Doan, Dockery, Anderson, Kirk Hughes, and Mike Williams. That is a right-handed offensive line. Center to right tackle, very experienced. Ivan Williams, second career start. Trestle, the fullback, the gifted. B.J. Johnson and Roy Williams. And Bo Scaife is the tight end. You'll see Brock Edwards as well. Ivan Williams coming off a career best. 103 yards is the single set. Sims rolling naturally underneath. Roy Williams on the reception. They told you, what James, a, they, wanted to, they wanted to get him in early, and he's involved early defensively for the Red Raiders. Radliff McKinney, Wyatt, watch out for Aaron Hunt, a very active junior from Denison, Texas. Shane Flugents, Jonathan Hawkins are the linebackers. And to the secondary, CJ is going to be covering BJ, the Johnson guys, Hans in the other corner, and Curtis and McClendon. The free safety McClendon's the leading scorer on the team. He's got three touchdowns. He is tied with Ricky Williams with 18 points apiece. <laughs> don't see that. You're often, looking at me going, I don't know how that happens. I just love it. You're an offensive guy. That kills you. Sims throwing on second and short. What a cushion for Roy Williams. What a shot going to him two for two. Jose Leo Hansen, the junior from Inglewood, California, from the Los Angeles area, gave him a little bit too much. You know, Roy Williams may have to pull out some films on the Denver Broncos. Terrell Davis, it's one cut and go. Roy Williams is big enough and strong enough where all he has to do is make one move, one move, and up the field. And almost run over these guys because he can punish them. He may not realize that yet. He can punish those smaller defensive backs in the secondary. Ivan Williams is single. He's a big guy. 6'1, 235. Straight drop it over six. Wide open. Roy Williams inside the 45. Three for three, partner. Now, who would have thunk it? Texas Tech comes out. They run the ball three consecutive times. Texas comes out, and they head it straight to Roy Williams. Three consecutive plays. He comes up with the big catches. You see the big numbers on him, 6'5", 210 pounds. This guy is incredible. Well, Texas is offensive unit coming off their most complete game of the season. Better than 500 yards offensively. Last week at Houston, they hadn't topped 400 yards over their first two prior to that. Sims on the long count. Ivan Williams running up the back of Antoine Kirk Hughes, who put him down as right guard, the senior from Waxahachie, Texas. Flugent, the middle linebacker, came in to close it out. And that's the way you have to stop Ivan Williams. You can't let him get up ahead of steam because he's a big back. Once you make him stop his feet, you really do have him defeated. And they did a good job at the point of attack. And that's really number 95, Robert McKinney over there. They're going with what they call their heavy offense. That's what defense, that's what Greg McMacken calls it. So he's got the uh, guys in there who like to eat. No gain on the carry. Second and 10 for the Longhorns. Inside the 44, the Red Raiders. Ivan Williams, big hole. Taking tackles down to the 35, short of the first down by a couple. Didn't take much to get in the secondary. Ran into the free safety, Paul McClendon and C.J. Johnson, the corner. Well, he gets good blocking at the point of attack. Mike Williams, number 63, his right tackle, along with Bo Scape, the tight end, number 80. But Williams just turns his guy in. And I like at the end of the run when Ivan Williams, he punishes the defensive back because those defensive backs are going to be chasing Roy Williams and B.J. Johnson in the secondary. And every time you pound on them, it slows them down a little. Body blows early round to the That's fight. That's right. Kill the body and the head must die. Third and a deuce. Roy Williams, big cushion again against him. This time, C.J. Johnson, the senior from San Antonio, at a first down, making it look way too easy on the fourth reception for Roy Williams. And now we're thinking of getting Roy Williams off early and getting him in the flow of the ballgame, but this is also great for Chris Sims. I mean, he's thrown four passes. He's been on the money on each of them. He had one great catch on a high ball by Roy Williams, but now he's got his confidence. He doesn't have to overthrow balls. He doesn't have to worry about doing it in the red zone because he's done it as they march down the field. First down, Longhorn. Started their own 20. Now it's at the 28 of Texas Tech. 
It's creeping up. Eighth man in the box right there, number 31, Kevin Curtis. Sims read it. Goes up top to Williams. Positive yardage again. Down to the 23 for about a five-yard gain on first down. For those of you just joining us, Joel Myers, James Lofton, Eric Clemens in Austin, Texas. Big 12 Conference football on Fox Sports Net. The league opener and Texas so impressive on their first drive through the air for the most part, James. And if you're just joining us, Roy Williams already has five catches. No, that's not a misprint. And that's <laughs> and he had 13 coming in over the first three games. Huge hole. Ivan Williams on the carry. He's got another first down. Close to the 13 before he's tripped up on the strong safety, Kevin Curtis. So now, almost at will, Texas doing what they want in the opening possession. Yeah, they're just opening the holes, running straight down the field. And that's just power running in between the tackles. And that's where Ivan Williams is really going to pierce you. He is leading the Longhorns coming in. A career best in his first career start last week in Houston. Got the one-on-one -on -one you want outside. B.J. Johnson, the motion man. Williams again, slipping a tackle. Tough to bring down. Finally, they stand him up at the eight. But another five yards for Ivan Williams. When we talked to Mike Leach yesterday, one of the things he said, he said the difference in our two ball clubs really is their dominating offensive line. When you look at these guys, Doan, Dockery, Matthew Anderson, Antoine Curcuse, and Mike Williams, they have one of the top offensive lines in the country. And when you think about national championship teams, it's a team like Texas with this line that can contend for that. 38-pound difference in average weight between the two lines. That's before meals. Second and five. Williams slipping the tackle. Diving close to the goal line. First and goal, Texas to the two. McClendon saved the touchdown. Well, the sounds of the game. Some big plays downstairs. Well, McClendon, give him credit. The senior from Stanford, Texas, he took a shot. You know, it's a little bit of a lost heart, but wouldn't you have liked to have seen a stiff arm right there? Don't see it at all. You don't see it. He had the ball in his right arm, his dominant arm. First in goal, Texas. It'll be an 80-yard drive if they score. Ivan Williams. Or make a guess. He's in. Ivan Williams. Touchdown, Texas. The big boys blew some huge holes open after they featured Roy Williams early. Well, Greg McMacken, defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, went with his giant lineup, and that includes Robert McKinney and Lamont Anderson. Well, the Giants from Texas were a little bit bigger than the Giants from Lubbock. Now, we talked about the size difference on the defensive front for the guys from Texas Tech, and it is a big difference. Not just a few pounds, 38 pounds. Dusty Mangum for the point after. And now Texas on the season 17 of 18 inside the red zone. Williams with the score. Texas with the lead. What? Burger King scoring drive with the Texas Longhorns. Took about five minutes. And too easy for Ivan Williams and the Longhorns. They marched 80 yards to take a 7-0 lead. So Texas Tech and Texas getting together for the 51st time. The series began in 1928. They have played every year since 1960. The two, believe it or not, have split the last eight meetings, split the last four here in Austin. Although the Longhorns have taken overall 23 of the 28 played here in the state capitol. McCann back deep. Third in the nation, 38-yard average so far in returns this year, and he puts it on the ground at the two. And he's buried. What a pop at the 13. Huge hit on Ivory McCann. Bo Trehan. Early wake-up call. That's an early going to sleep call. You get hit that hard. <laughs> you know, I love the way he's running it up in there, but you've got to have your head on a swivel. Well, it is on a swivel now. <laughs> wow, what a big hit. Well, Texas Tech started the game with three running plays by Ricky Williams. The other Ricky Williams, of course. The other guy's in New Orleans now. That was maybe as big a surprise as Texas throwing it almost every down early in the game. Kingsbury out of the shotgun. Little screen underneath for the wide receiver. 
And it's complete to Carlos Francis, the sophomore from Fort Worth, for good yardage out to the 22. Kalen Thornton catching up with him, the defensive end from behind. I, I finally got a good name for that screen. It's called the tunnel screen because you running through a tunnel, you have the defensive lineman on one side chasing you down, and the defensive secondary on the other side. And the receiver comes in that little tunnel. That time the tunnel collapsed from the defensive line side and got him. Gain of eight on first down. Kingsbury looking for first and throwing it over the head in the neighborhood of Ricky Williams, incomplete. They went three and out the first time. Well, Cliff Kingsbury leading this offense and leading the Big 12 in passing at 325 yards a game. The junior from outside of San Antonio, over 3,400 yards passing, leading the Big 12 last year, 21 touchdown passes while hitting 62% of his attempts. And this is a big one now, James, on third and a couple. Joel, when are they going to make up a jumbotron on you? It'd be a, a, a real <laughs> tiny one. <laughs> Kingsbury underneath to the 25 for a first down. Nehemiah Glover, redshirt freshman from Lamarck, Texas. Clutching it just where he needed to go, right past the 24 near the 25. So a heads up play on the quick release by Kingsbury. His father, Tim, was his high school coach at New Braunfels, about a 30 minute drive from downtown San Antonio. And Mike Lee's told us, hey, he's a coach's son. He's just a tough kid. Have you been on the Slitter Bomb? <laughs> it's the water park there in New Braunfels. I've been out there, <laughs> but the barbecue just past that is really unbelievable. It surprises me that you know all the food locations. <laughs> Kingsbury, again, going behind the line. Wes Ruckler. Welker takes it in. Good yardage past the 30. Close to the 33 for the sophomore from Oklahoma City. So television's most unique brand of football commentary returns tomorrow with NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. This week, Jay Moore will visit Eagles camp. Boomer size and breaks down the Ravens-Broncos game on Cyber Strader. The gang will take a look at the struggling Minnesota Vikings. NFL This Morning pregame show that's not really a pregame show. Tomorrow morning, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Second and short for the Red Raiders, starting to move offensively behind the arm of Kingsbury. Finds some time. Got him. Wide open, oh. and it was underneath. Thrown to Carlos Francis. Too shy for the sophomore. He had 41 grabs last year. Academic all Big 12 last year for the young man. And you know what? Mike Leach made it a point to tell us that they had gotten their graduation rate up to 70%. I think that's in the top three in the Big 12. So. Uh, was a complicated offense, you need to bring in smart guys, and I think Mike Leach is doing a good job at that. You know what he said last year? We were number two in the nations. Yep. Number two, Boston College number one. Seven guys working on master's degrees. He goes, we want the nation's crown now. He goes, we want that title. I like his attitude. Big third down. Kingsbury behind his intended target. Again, Carlos Francis was the man into double coverage though you know what on that short slant you want big physical receivers and francis and nehemiah glover outside they're short they're tough but i would still like to see a bigger guy throw that ball to cole roberts or mickey peters the big targets great house is going to punt once again they had a 51 yarder 41 yard average basher was the key to the north carolina game he returned one for a score, 44 yards at 51 and 39 yard punt returns. Very high one. Great house with super hang time. And we've got a timeout on the field as he takes it in where Texas will begin offensively with a seven point lead when we come back at their own 26. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Sitco. Sitco is proud to support today's individual athletes and the teams they represent. From all of us at Sitco, enjoy the game. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Sierra, one company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Die Hard, the battery America trusts most, available in tears. By Renner Center, where you can get the best in electronics, furniture, and appliances. And by Holiday Inn Express, the smart choice for travelers who want to stay smart. I like their style. Classic color, burnt orange. It doesn't work. It blends well. in well with flesh tones. It doesn't work well in Wisconsin in December, though. No. Ivan Williams is the single. An 80-yard drive to start the game for Texas. Uh, the Longhorns have a 7-0 lead. Second time they've touched the football. Sims finding B.J. Johnson. 
Johnson got away from the cornerback on the sideline. Sims waited for him to clear C.J. Johnson. Great throw by Chris Sims. He's patient enough to stand there in the pocket. He knows that he has the protection. We talked about his offensive line opening up the holes for the running game while also protecting Chris Sims very well in the start of this ball game early. What a beginning for Chris Sims. By this Longhorn offense, he is now six for six. First down, Texas, at a timeout taken. He still had nine seconds on the clock. Something you can afford to do in the first half, not the second half. 5.33 remaining in the opening 15 minutes of play. And we'll do the same as Chris Sims. Come right back to Austin, Texas. A brilliant beginning in this league opener for the Longhorns, looking for their 11th straight home victory. Texas with the ball and the lead, and welcome back to Austin. First down, Longhorns at their own 41. Sims, six for six, make it seven for seven. B.J. Johnson, after fumbling it early, puts it on the ground at the end of the play. They say he's down at the 49 after the running catch. 72 yards now for Chris Sims, seven of seven passing. You know, that's almost a lateral, though. I see that ball that's kind of parallel to the line of scrimmage, and it's a risky throw. You know, you think of it as a pretty easy throw, but it's got to be right on the money where the receiver can turn up the field. It's a great play, and the receivers out in front, Roy Williams and Sloan Thomas, they have to block. Sims coming off his best performance, hitting 20 of 35 last week. He's got a ton of confidence. Williams cutting it back against the green. Backs downfield. Alvin Williams inside the 25. Paul McGlynn to the free safety, finally catching up with him. I think it was Bill Walsh years ago with the San Francisco 49ers who said, we throw to set up the run. What they've done in this ball game early is they've slowed down the pass rush. They have people thinking about pursuing, getting after people. And Ivan Williams is a load with good speed. Not great speed, good speed, but he sticks it up in there. A couple guys run him down at the end of the play, but boy, is he a good runner. Young man from Midland Lee, and we saw his debut opening night here on Fox Sports Net. Cedric Benson taking over. He had 74 yards last Saturday at Houston. Waiting for the hole to open. Benson taking the pile. He's got about seven on first down. He is a load as well. I like when a guy is patient enough to let the hole continue to develop because there's really no hole, but there's such a great push by Antoine Kirk Hughes and Mike Williams on the right side of that line. They're just pushing the defensive lineman off the ball. And Greg McMacken has to find a way to stunning or getting his guys in the gaps to thwart this running game. Antoine Kirk Hughes, Mike Williams, who you're talking about, the guard, the tackle, both honorable mention, all Big 12 last year. Going in motion. The wide receiver, Tony Jeffrey. Benson barely chopped down, tried to turn the corner on yeah. C.J. Johnson. Nice play by the cornerback. You know, when, if you're C.J. Johnson and you're 5'9 and you're playing in the Big 12, you realize, hey, I'm not going to overpower guys. I'm not going to hit him in the chest. I take his legs out, and I, I hit him right around the thigh area. That's a good place to hit him. Hit him right there, and they will go down. And Cedric Benson, all everything in the state of Texas, leading Midland lead to three straight 5A titles. 127 career TDs. He, he can smell the end zone. He can smell it. He's getting a whiff of it right now. He knows when it's pay dirt time. Third and three. Victor Ike is in there. Sims throwing. He's got the tight end Bo Scape, and he's got a first down to the end. Eight-yard line for Scape, who caught a career best five last Saturday, including a score. So many weapons on this offense. You know, and I know this is premature talk. We're in the first quarter. I haven't seen an offense as well-rounded as this. Two quarterbacks, two running backs, four wide receivers, three tight ends that can come in the game. And then you have great fullbacks, Matt Trussell and Chad Stevens, who don't even play. But when they come in, they do what they're supposed to do. They don't make a lot of noise, but they do their assignment. Not a bad poker hand. Some of the base, couple of sevens. There goes Ivan Williams, just denied inside the one. What a smack Ivan Williams put on down close to the goal line. You know, it's early in the ballgame, but they're starting to roll down Texas Tech up front. 
Boy, McClendon has taken some body shots, hasn't Boy, he? Boy, but McClendon, he squares up. And that's what you have to do against the bigger opponent. You try and take him on at an angle, he's going to run right through you. Ivan Williams, full house backfield. Williams. Oh, nice play. Shut down. Nice play by Jonathan Hawkins, number 47, knifing through there. And just as Ivan Williams was thinking about leaving his feet, got to the legs, he wrapped up both arms around him. You know, you don't stop playing defense just because they're on the one foot line. So you dig in tougher. Now Hawkins last year missed all of last season with a broken ankle. Two years ago, he was on a mention all big play. So, solid player. Now third and goal for the Longhorns. Sims, quarterback sneak, he's in. Touchdown, Texas. <laughs> Behind his center, Matthew Anderson, the senior from Cuero, Texas. Sims has done it all tonight. Eight for eight passing, 77 yards, a touchdown run. Dusty Mangum in for the point after. And Longhorn fans couldn't ask for much more. That time a 74-yard drive after an 80-yard drive. Longhorns by a couple of touchdowns. Ivor McGann takes the kickoff at the four, finds a crease, but it closes in a hurry as he goes across the 15 to the 20-yard line. So the Red Raiders get it for the third time offensively. First and 10 is brought to you by the American Red Cross. Please help assist the victims of the terrorist attack and their families. You can help by calling right now, 1-800-HELP-NOW. That is 1-800-HELP-NOW, or by visiting redcross.org. Thanks again for your help with everything. First and 10, Texas Tech. Kingsbury, shell shot, Red Raiders, one first down so far. Eight on the other side for the Texas Longhorns. Williams, the single to the backfield. Three-man rush. Look up back. Wes Welker takes his shot. At the 23, dives to the 25. Corey Redding getting over there, the left end. And they only did rush three as they dropped the end. Well, when we talked to Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, and, and when, when a team wins a Super Bowl, everybody tries to figure out a way to beat them. Well, when somebody wins a national championship, try and figure out a way to beat them. If it was Oklahoma with the spread offense, Carl Reese said, we need more speed. We take strong safeties, we're moving the linebacker. Linebackers, we're moving the defensive ends. We want more speed on the field. It is King Scoville this time. And that was a lateral pass to Scoville, something you were just talking about for the senior from Dallas who gets the second first down of the game for the Red Raiders. And you'll see the official on the field put his hand backwards to signify that that is a backwards pass, that it would be a live ball if not caught. This is a critical juncture of the game. I talked to Mike Leach on the field before the game, and I said, Mike, you know, you've got to stay in this game early. And he realized that, so this is a very important drive for Texas Tech. Final 15 seconds of an all-Texas Longhorn quarter. They're showing the blitz off the edge. Still those straight four-man rush. Kingsbury trying to get it to the wide out and a little bit too tall. As it went for Daryl Jones for the first time tonight. And Daryl Jones is one of his taller receivers at 6'2". Cliff Kingsbury just a little high on that throw. Sometimes it's the adrenaline trying to get it out there. You're all pumped up. Quentin Jammer, no, not a, uh, a bad corner. We heard made mention of that. Movement up front by the Longhorns. Contact by Marcus Tubbs, the tackle. Prior to the snap, defense was offside. That's a five-yard penalty. John Bible. Referee of this Big 12 contest. So it's going to be second and five, a break for the Red Raiders. And the one thing I'm noticing different about Texas defending against Texas Tech as opposed to Kansas State against Oklahoma earlier today, Texas Tech is leaving a guy in deep center field. Williams is the single. 
Walker, the motion man, he'll take it right from Kingsbury on the corner and is pounded out of bounds. Derek Johnson, the true freshman from Waco that we were talking about early in the contest, runs a 4-5, the outside linebacker. Can he ever hit? True freshman doesn't play like it. They've got a couple of guys, though. You've got Cedric Benson coming over on the offensive side. You know, he's only 6'4", 215 pounds. What happens when he puts on another 20 pounds of muscle? Red Raiders one of three on their third down prize. Three seconds left in the quarter. They need a little more than two, almost three, for the first down. Texas a little confused there. They call for timeout. They had about 13 guys on the field. They're, they're trying to get extra guys out there, and then they run them off depending upon personnel. Well, Carl Reese, you were just talking about the defensive coordinator for the Longhorns getting ready for so many different looks. First week, Texas Tech, the safety wasn't there. 26th rows deep by Kingsbury. Last week, they played a soft zone against Texas Tech. Ricky Williams, a career best, 13 catches. So Carl Reese tried to actually get a feel for things, doing well in calling the defense so far. And I think what Carl Reese has an advantage over uh, the other opponents who played Texas Tech early. Number one, he got to see them on film. He also got to see a Ricky Williams who is new and improved this year. He had a knee injury in 1999 and looks like he's back to, to full speed. But when you talk about speed, you have to look at this defensive unit, Corey Redding, Kalen Thornton, the defensive ends, they were recruited as linebackers. But the day they stepped on campus, they said, surprise, <laughs> your defensive ends. And these guys are fast. They're not real big. This trend really started at Miami a number of years ago. And you look at the guys who are playing defensive end in the NFL now, they come in, they're 6'5", 260 pounds. That sounds big. But when you compare them to a defensive tackle, right. who's 6'4", 310 pounds, you realize these guys on the outside are built for speed. It is a speed defense, especially with the departure and graduation of Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers for the Longhorns. Now, third and a couple. Huge third down early in the game. Final snap of the first quarter through Texas Tech. Kingsbury pops it over the middle. The tight end, and they don't have real big tight ends, takes it in. That's Cole Roberts, the senior from Shadow Water. A little bit better and bigger, actually, than That's Mickey that Peters. That's target you need slanting inside. So the quick pop over the middle to the tight end. Texas Tech much needed. Everett Wall says no. Ivan Williams says yes with a touchdown. All the big plays for the Longhorns early. Welcome back once again to Austin, Texas. Joel Myers along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens down to the sideline. Roll reversal. Texas throwing the ball often and early as opposed to what we thought from Texas Tech. Yeah, but I think if you ask the guys from Texas, they say we can do just about anything we want offensively. They have a lot of weapons. We've seen that early. They came out throwing, but the running game really has been there, and it's really been their offensive line that has made the difference. Kingsbury trying to go deep for Carlos Francis. Not close to the target, though, on the boundary. But the luxury to do that because it was first down for Texas Tech after they got that key third down conversion. You know, when you look at, we talked about balance for Texas in the pregame. 77 yards rushing, 77 passing. I'd say that's pretty good balance. But also, I think Texas Tech, 20 yards rushing, 44 passing. They've moved the ball effectively on the ground. When they come up short, is in third and short. They haven't been able to convert those third and one and third and twos. Our FedEx numbers at the end of the first quarter. Kingsbury again with a flag on the play, putting it up for grabs, and it's intercepted almost. He had it, then dropped it. It was Roderick Babers. He thought he had it long enough. You can't, Am I a Glover, the intended target? You can't throw that deep ball inside when they have a free safety in the middle the way that they'd like to throw it. You can see the official, not John Bible, the other one back there is saying, though, to Roderick Babers, it was coming back anyway. I talked to Carl Reese. I'll let him get the call in. I Outside, need to tell you a great story about defense, Carl Reese. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Carl Reese was coaching at LSU, and he said he just happened to be driving by a Kentucky practice when they were running the same offense under Mummy. And he said they practiced this throw, this deep throw. They put a big bucket down the field, 40 yards down the field. They throw it high up and try and drop it into the bucket. You could see that arc that Cliff Kingsbury has on the ball high, and you try and drop it in the bucket. Well, when you have a center fielder with the type of range that they have, he's lined up 15 yards deep. He can go sideline to sideline. Second and five. They want to dump it off on the screen for Ricky Williams. 
Faber is doing a good job. Knocked him out of bounds after a short gain. They're short of the first down on second and five. It'll bring up third and a couple. Good closing speed by Rod Babers. Every, yeah, they, I mean, this whole team has speed. Now, this is where you need to be a little bit of a gambler. You have third and two. You haven't been able to convert this before. Don't throw the four-yard pass. He just these went to guys, his tight end. These guys works. are biting, biting on the short throw. You throw it up top over them. Let's see if they listen to James Lofton up here with two to each side. Tight end in the slide on the wide side of the field. Cole Roberts. He caught it on the last conversion. Kingsbury using his first time out. So early in the second quarter, the longest drive of the game for the Red Raiders. Now can they convert when we come back on a key third down. Third and a couple from the Texas 31 for Cliff Kingsbury. A very composed junior out of the San Antonio area, New Braunfels. Again, the same formation we saw with two to each side. Williams in the backfield. And he is listening to James Lofton going up top, and it's overthrown. Trying to get it to Nehemiah Glover. And let's check in once again for a Dr. Pepper game break with Eric Clemens. Eric? All right, Joel. Uh, we know it's college football Saturday here on Fox, but let's go to some baseball. Pack Bell Park, sixth inning tied at one. Barry Bond, six to two, one pitch from Chuck McElroy into McCovey Cove. That's his 69th homer of the season, 563 career, tying Reggie Jackson for seventh on the all time list. However, 69 is, of course, one short of tying Big Mac's record set in 1998. Guys? All right, Eric. Key early, all of a sudden, going for it on fourth down. Texas Tech. Two for three so far this season. Ricky Williams down the middle he goes. Touchdown, Red Raiders. A bolt of lightning for Ricky Williams getting away from an ankle tackle of Morris Gordon for 31 yards. Unfortunately, one of the Red Raiders, it looks like Matt Hyder is down the left guard. The senior from Roswell, New Mexico. And they're, they're checking his left ankle. They ran a trap right over Matt Hyder's area. Great call by Rick Leach, Mike Leach and his staff. And you know what, you, when you're going to attack and you run after play, sometimes guys can run themselves out of the play. Number 66 goes to block, and number 72, Rex Richards, he's downfield, and there's nobody to block. Well, if there's nobody to block, there's nobody to tackle Ricky Williams either. And fortunately, Hyder getting up. It looked like maybe even his own teammate, but one of the players on the trap that you were talking about came up the back of his leg, back of his ankle. A nine play 80 yard drive taking just about two minutes Robert Trees in for the extra point attempt he is perfect so far this season 10 of 10 junior from Converse Texas tries to make it a seven point ball game does exactly that a huge boost Red Raiders needed it after two early scores. Ricky Williams comes through. In the box, they've got more guys than they can block, but you know what? Sometimes that doesn't matter. If you're just going to hit one gap, you're going to hit it at full speed. Maurice Gordon, number 48, had a chance at an arm tackle, but an arm tackle isn't going to bring down Ricky Williams. And Rex Richards, 72, the pulling guard. He was looking for somebody to block. Yeah, he, he, ran, he ran out of gas, though, before he got to the end zone. Greathouse kicks it away. Ike and Hill are back. It'll be Victor Ike from the four. Good corner kick. Pinned him to the boundary. Didn't cover the sideline, though. And Greathouse saves the day for Texas Tech. The kicker. Boy, they did it to perfection, putting him right on the sideline. In their coverage unit, you want to run past that first wave of blockers. They had four guys down in front. And they all stopped. Now, it's great blocking by Texas, but you have to run past the blockers. Don't break down. Don't break down. Run through them. Nice job blocking there by Brock Edwards, number 84 for Texas. Victor Ike, one of the best in the nation last year, 27-yard average on kickoff returns. And he was the starting 
tailback issue don't forget on opening night here in Austin all that work that the Red Raiders just did on offense is almost for naught. you get the ball close to midfield trips to the wide side of the field underneath Roy Williams short game for the midfield strike brought down by CJ Johnson Campbell's league leaders all time rushing leaders for Texas Tech Ricky Williams last week going over the 3,000 yard mark only the fourth in Red Raider history joining Pam Morris James Gray and Byron Hansbar but back in 1999 when they were still a run oriented offense and he gets hurt in week one this guy would have overtaken Byron Hansbar in the old Spike Dykes offense but he's turned into a different type of back and proven pretty versatile in this uh, air raid offense go back to that 98 season in just a moment they give it to the motion man nifty moves running was the wide receiver Tony Jeffrey who caught a touchdown last week the redshirt freshman from Houston and he moves the chains close to the 40 yard line no bad news for the Red Raiders Matt Hyder being helped to the locker room the big guy didn't put a lot of weight on that angle did he no no he didn't not at all First down of the run by Jeffrey. It is just shy of the 40 of the Red Raiders. Seven point ball game. Nice pocket protection. Sims in stride, hitting Roy Williams. Touchdown, Texas. So far for Williams. Roy Williams lines up in the slot, and Kevin Curtis has the zone coverage around him. He knows that he's the man who's been getting the ball. Now, a quick observation on Roy Williams. You throw him that little five-yard stop route, he doesn't run real well after the catch because he doesn't have any momentum going. But get him the ball when he's moving in the open field, he's a big load to bring down at 6'5, 210 pounds. Bank him in for the point after. Didn't take long for the Longhorns to get it back after the out return of 42 yards. It's a 40-yard touchdown toss to Roy Williams. The last word, weeknights at 11 on Fox Sports Net. 36. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zero on Fox Sports Net continues from Austin, Texas. It's the league opener, the Big 12 Conference, and what a year for the Big 12. Non-league play, 26 and five coming into the weekend. As it's kicked away, McCann coming to the sideline near the 15 and doesn't make it back to the 25. Great coverage again for the Texas Longhorns downfield. Anderson, the first one down there. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, brought to you by FedEx. Shipping at FedEx.com. It's fast, it's easy, and it just got cheaper. By Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Campbell's Chunky Soup. Soup that eats like a meal. This is a dream right now if you're Texas Longhorn fan. And if you're Chris Sims, you don't want to wake up because it is a perfect dream. 10 of 10, 121 yards passing. And now Kingsbury tries to answer with the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Chris Sims would tell you in his dream that when he's 10 out of 10, it's for 10 touchdowns, too. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true all pro wide receiver. Kingsbury out of the gun. Underneath, turn up field goal, Roberts. Gain of three. That's their running game, isn't it? That is their running game. A short pass. Now you want after, you want a long run after. So this needs to get turned upfield. He's running sideways a little too much there. There are 117 Division 1A teams playing college football. Okay. Texas Tech is 101st in rushing. Wow. They like to throw the football. Yeah, they're up there in passing, though. 325 a game from Kingsbury after the first two. That is strong. Tops of the Big 12. Welker breaks the tackle. That's the key. It's after the catch. And then he pays for it. Nathan, Nathan Baxter, the strong safety. Man, are they cracking early. 
You know what, and Nathan Vashier and Ahmad Brooks, three and five, played cornerback last year. We talked about the speed thing. He took corners, he made them their free safety and strong safety, so more speed on the field to defend against these spread offenses. And Vashier started as a true freshman last year, while Brooks, who were looking at the free safety, he's a former high school quarterback, so he looks at those tendencies a lot yeah. in the backfield. Third and a couple. They're two of five so far in the third down tries, 35% on the year. Shovel, Ricky Williams, nifty play. Boy, they are a resourceful group. Use a lot of plays. And, but you know what? It's still, you know, you, you may look at this spread offense and think finesse football. That was a hard hit that Ricky Williams took at the tail end of that play. It is still smash mouth football. You're still going about it, trying to get three, four, five yards at a crack. And every once, it's the same thing as handing the back the ball 40 times. You want about three big plays out of that. So they're going to throw short 40 times. They want four or five big plays out of that. Long arms by a 14. Big first down for Kingsbury. The kick out block. Almost like a flanker screen to Daryl Jones, the senior from Lubbock. Big yardage. A little more than 10, almost 11 before he's knocked out by Nathan Vasher. Yeah, great job on the outside by Wes Welker, number 27, and Carlos Francis, number 82. They get their guys on the ground. That's that seal block, a seal here and a seal there. That's just like Vince Lombardi talked about on the sweep play. All they did, this is the Vince Lombardi sweep in 2000. You're, you're not just the next generation guy. You're way beyond that now. <laughs> I've lost my mind. <laughs> but it's a good one. You'll find it. On first down, the running play. We'll take Gains a yard. a couple for we'll Cole Roberts. D.D. Lewis, the middle linebacker. Senior from Houston. Make Texas cover all five guys that you have out in the pass pack. They're doing the gig them. They've got so many traditions over there in Lubbock. I got a feeling we're going to be in Lubbock before the end of the year. They got a good, they got a great thing going. It's not a bad spot to watch Big 12 football. Gainsbury on second and long. Again, behind the tight end who holds on, Cole Roberts. Boy, what concentration, because he took a shot from behind by Nathan Vasher. Now, Cole Roberts goes out, number 86, Mickey Peters comes in. Peters is a little faster, not as large. Peters in high school ran 13-8 in the high hurdles, number 86. And he's gonna line up a tight end, and he can fool you with his speed. Seems like they face third and two, third and three every time they've had a third down. Fake the Welker play. Kingsbury again for Roberts, who takes two shots. Coming over, Quentin Jammer. And he didn't line him up as much as he wanted to, but he was effective. And you know what? Mike Leach is going for it. He's already converted once, and it yeah. turned into a score. Just a little too much air on this ball and a little too much meat from Quentin Jammer. <laughs> and Jammer was actually kind on that. No, he, he, lowered, the, he lowered the shoulder, but... He, he was hitting a big guy. Cole Roberts weighs 250 pounds. He's giving away 50 pounds there. Jarrett's just a cruiserweight. They scored on 31 yards from 31 yards out. It was Williams. They won't get it this time on fourth down, though. Dylan Johnson, the true freshman, read it perfectly. That was his assignment. It is tough to throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage against the team. If you line up all 11 guys out there, with the exception of number 95, Marcus Tubbs, the other 10 guys would run under 4, 6, and the 40. So you cannot, you cannot throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage on a short down situation and expect to get away with it. Throw the ball beyond the sticks. So they fail on fourth and two at the Texas 47. And the Longhorns get it at the 47 for the second consecutive time. And if I'm Texas, I go deep right now to number nine, Sloan Thomas, at the bottom of the screen. The forgotten sophomore, their trio of sophomores, with B.J. Johnson and Roy Williams. Instead, Bo Scape can't hold on. Couldn't hold on. You bring up a good point, though. Sloan Thomas, he played last year as a true freshman, a sophomore from Houston. And the offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, says he's the most acrobatic of the three. And, and you know what I asked Greg Davis, who was the fastest one last year? And he surprised me when he said B.J. Johnson. Well, I talked to B.J. Johnson's dad before the game, and he said he has dog speed. I said, what do you mean dog speed? He said, well, when he was in the fourth grade, 
there was a dog by the name of Trix that lived on our block. And it would chase BJ home every day, and he could outrun the dog, so we figured he had dog speed. <laughs> That's breakneck speed. Sims in trouble. Bailed out. Roy Williams waited for him. It paid off for five after Chris Sims just threw his first incomplete pass. Kevin Curtis chasing down Sims from behind, the, coming off the edge. Here you talk about quarterbacks being able to feel the pressure. Chris Sims does a nice job in moving away from the pressure. He knows he's going to get hit, and he pays the price. Look at that at the tail end, right on his throwing shoulder, too. Sims, a big kid, though. Tough one, 6'5", 225. Empty backfield for Sims. Four wide receivers, make it five. Roy Williams slot near side. Got Brett Robbins, number 25, down at the bottom. Gadget plays sometimes with Robbins in there. Roy Williams won't get there. Getting him early and underneath the cornerback. And Aaron Hunt came over to clean up. C.J. Johnson there, the first one. I didn't realize Texas carried a punter. They don't need one. <laughs> Brian Bradford and to punt it away. That's a, that's a good job by Texas Tech on defense responding at midfield, shutting Texas down, getting them off the field. And that's a huge three and out, it getting really the ball back at their own 47. That may be the series of the game for the Red Raiders. Welker waits for the Bradford punt. Good hang time. Fair catch. That is taken in near the 12. So Texas Tech starting at their own 12, and that is the deepest start in their own territory. AP top 10 and how did the Big 12 in particular do today? Opening game of the league season. Oklahoma beat up Kansas State, but beat them up early. Kansas and, and, State game of scare late. When I watch Kansas State in that ball game, it's not very often that you lose a ball game and you move up in the rankings. You're playing on yes. the road. You lose by one point to the number three team in the country, the defending national champions. I think you move up in the polls, and I think the cheerleaders would agree with that. Now, Kansas State hurt themselves. So many mistakes, especially penalties. They lose by a point after Oklahoma. Had a big early lead in the third quarter. Kingsbury, tons of time for Welker. And Welker's got the first down and some breathing room to the 25. Great pocket protection, though, for Cliff Kingsbury. Everett Rawls making the hit. Time for our Renta Center trivia. Texas coming in tonight with 10 straight home victories. What is his school record? Can you tell us for most consecutive home wins? I'd say it's probably more than 10. I'd say it's a lot more than 10. <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes left in the half. Ricky Williams breaking tackles. Flag down at the original line. Williams down near the 31. To Ricky Williams on the carry. 44 Redding. Redding getting over the left end. All hold. Yeah, and you really want to avoid that against a good defense. You can't go first and 20 and expect to make a lot of first downs against a quality defensive unit. They'll take it after the gain of six, so march it off. But speed will make you hold people. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remains first down. You know, you were just talking about Ricky Williams before the knee injury. Ricky Williams, who got six, but it was denied, negated on the penalty. Finished fourth in the nation back in 98, 144 yards rushing per contest. And as Mike Lee said when we got him back last year, it was basically about Thursday before our first game where he really was right. feeling good about himself. And, and Mike Leach said he really couldn't compare him to what he was like in 1999 because he just watched him on film. Wasn't there. He's the offensive coordinator for Bob Stoops at Oklahoma. First and 20 from the 15. Kingsbury in trouble. Gets his 15th completion anyway, though. King Scoville across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Injury update, Eric Clements, what's the latest? King Scoville. Has Eric Clements been injured? Is that, is that what the update is? <laughs> Man, somebody get down there and help Eric Clements out. Strong side linebacker making the stop there. We'll check in in a minute with Eric Clements after the gain of six. 
Kings Sometimes Barry the now. quarterback is left responsible for the blitzer. They're responsible just to take a big hit. He took a shot after that throw. And that had to be a hot read, trying to get it to Wes Welker, who but wasn't know, ready. But you know what that is? That's a zone blitz. Cliff Kingsbury, he sees the overload from that side. But what Wes Welker sees, he sees three guys over him. And he says, this can't be main coverage. There's still three guys over here. So I can't break it off, because if I break it off, I'm running into the zone. That's exactly what the zone blitz is meant to do. Make you make a false read on your blitz, pick up, and run into his own coverage. And throw the ball where it's not supposed to be thrown. Third and long, right at 14. Pocket holding it up for Kingsbury despite the blitz from the outside. Going deep and throws it up for grabs. Almost picked off by Ahmad Brooks. She tried to get it to Carlos Francis. For those of you who watched earlier today, Oklahoma and Kansas State, you saw Oklahoma going downfield deep. Not when you have two guys in deep center field. One guy's going to fold up and come here, but the other one will stay in deep center field. As long as you keep a deep center fielder, you have that comfort zone. That's what Texas has going for it in this ballgame. They have so much speed from the other 10 guys, they can get away with leaving a guy in center field. Clinton Greathouse will put it away. He's had a couple of good ones. Barely gets this one away. Basher calling for the fair catch, and he's got it at his own 38. So, boy, you talk about great field position. That has been the story as well over the last three possessions for the Longhorns after the 41-yard punt. Well, tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday begins with America's number one three game shows. J.B., Terry, Howie, and Chris get you ready for the kickoff. Then Warren Sapp the nominating Buccaneers defensive unit take on Randy Moss in the 0-2 Minnesota Vikings. They try to get back on track. Or Jamal Anderson of the surprising Atlanta Falcons looking to win their second straight. We'll match up with Jake the Snake Lover and the Arizona Cardinals plus other regional activity. Coverage will all start. Noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. Fresh running back Cedric Benson. He's had one carry in the game. He takes over to start the series using the short side of the field. And gobbled up by Robert Wyatt as he cruises for five. Now, Eric Clements, are you there? I am here now, and we do have some injury updates. I've been here all along, but not paying attention. No, I'm kidding. I mean, have a little difficulties down here. Anyway, Tex, Matt Heider, you saw him leave the field. He has a left ankle sprain. He's gone for some x-rays. Texas's Michael Ungar, the special teams guru, if you will, has a bruised right leg. It's being retaped. We'll see how he feels. He should enter the game a little later, guys. Thanks, Eric. Good to know everything's doing well on the sideline. It is second and five for the Longhorns at the 44. Sims pass almost even with him for B.J. Johnson. Short game, maybe three. See that dog speed on display there? <laughs> You're a tough customer. I like his dad's description of it. I'm glad you oh, gave us the goodness. definition that he beat the dog home, so he's got dog speed. Yep. They take their football very seriously in Austin, Texas, and snap by snap, they are into the game, almost like a baseball crowd, pitch by pitch. Well, they have so much explosiveness, there's an anticipation every time they get ready to do something offensively. Third and a couple. Sims almost perfect. Looking. Good coverage. Underneath, and he had his tight end wide open. Instead, he wanted to go to B.J. Johnson, and it wasn't close on the run and sailed on Well, him. you may think he was wide open, but there was a guy who would have stepped in front and gone the distance the other direction. Good job by Chris Sims in not forcing the ball in. You know, he had to throw it away. Probably should have thrown it away a little earlier so he didn't take the big pop from number nine, Aaron Hunt. I would have thrown it to Brock Edwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're up here. I love it. Wes Welker waits for the fud. Bradford has got to be getting tired. Back-to-back -back punts now. He wobbles one out. That's returnable return. type for Welker. Gets a block. Spinning past the 25. Good play downfield by the Longhorns. Because it looked like it was a returnable type. And it was the young man that you were just talking about, Eric Clemens. Michael Unger got down there and got a piece of him. Our Renna Center trivia, 10 straight home wins coming into tonight. School record. They've had some national championships here. So you wow. know they had two of them came, 68 and 69. 
42 straight between 68 and 76. So you're figuring about three or four graduating classes never lost a ball game here at home. Red Raiders first down to their own 26. Shovel. Ricky Williams can't get away. Boy, you talk about tying a guy up. Maurice Gordon did exactly that. Thornton cleaned up. Now don't forget, it's the new show everybody's been talking about. The best damn sports show, period. The sports comedy, commentary, constantly updated scores and highlights. What more could you want from a show? Introducing the best damn sports shows, period. It's weeknights at 730 and 1130, only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Hey, guys, going up Duncan talking on the cell phone. I like that. Second and 13. Kingsbury buying time. And he's got the first down. A lot there for Mickey Peters. He's the other tight end, but not really more like a wide outside. He's, Six, 300, 200 pounds. He's the speed guy. 13-8 in the high hurdles. And they really do a nice job in making you cover the whole field, not just vertically, but also horizontally. And Cliff Kingsbury does what throwing quarterbacks like to do. When he moves, he's still looking to throw. He does a nice job in delivering that ball and getting some extra yardage. Don't just run out of bounds. Give me five extra yards. Big start for Kingsbury. Again, the tight end, Cole Roberts. Down to the 35, so he's using Peters and Roberts. Peters at 24 on the previous reception. The free safety knocked him down. Ahmad Brooks, guy's a big one, though, at 6'6", 240. You know, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator for the Longhorns, called Cliff Kingsbury Gumby, and he did it in a way that, you know, we really admire this guy because we knock him around, we bend him, we break him. Well, we can't break him. You, you couldn't break Gumby, and you can't break Cliff Kingsbury. Tyrone Jones tried, number 39 on the last play, the strong side backer. First down, the Longhorn 35. Blitz is coming. Williams, short yardage. Goes That's the helmet. the helmet, not the ball. Gain him a couple. Down to the 33. Jones tripped him up. And Derek Johnson also in on this stop. Durable Ricky Williams, 5'8", 195, a senior from Duncanville, Texas. When he went out with his knee injury uh, two years ago against Arizona State, he actually came back in the ball game after he was hurt. That's, that, that, that's, that's how tough he is. That is the definition of tough. And, and look at the, the matching, the matchup between the dreadlock one and the clean shaven one. And in 98, Tech did win that game against Ricky Williams of the Longhorns. Kingsbury, ample time again to find Nehemiah Glover. Why does he look at every available option? He went off his primary and his secondary there. But his offensive line has given him a good, good protection. And I'm watching Kalen Thornton, number 43, he has his hands on his hips. Defensive linemen, when the defensive linemen start to put their hands on their hips, that means they're a little tired. Yeah, we were just talking about the matchup, Ricky Williams against Ricky Williams. I mean, this was really the duel in 1998. That's the year that the dreadlock one won the Heisman Trophy. And Ricky Williams from the Red Raiders out rushed him. And they won the ball game. Another key third down, third and four. No. And what a pop. King Scoville took a shot from Quentin Jammer. Quentin Jammer beat number 19, Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones' job is to block him. Jammer saw the quick throw, got right by Daryl Jones and laid a lick on King Scoville. Will they go for it on fourth, or will it be a long field goal try? Interesting decision. Quentin Jammer, first team all Big 12 last year. And a lot of the draft analysts say he is not only the best cornerback on bump and run and going into next year's draft, but also maybe the fourth best overall prospect coming out next year. Let's check in once again with Eric Clements. Eric? Yeah, you were saying, Joel, that uh, Quentin Jammer could have easily been a high first-round selection had he opted for the NFL draft after last season. But notable in the quotes before this week's game, Coach Mike Leach of Tech said, hey, he's a decent cornerback. Hey, the guy on the other side is just as good. He's a corner just like anybody else. We're going to attack him. That time, Quentin Jammer was attacking. Hey, they even posted that quote on their website at Texas Tech. So you know Jammer has some extra incentive going into tonight's game, fella. And that was the case last week in Houston, too. Cougars were talking a little bit like that. Yeah, I, I think Quentin Jammer, when, when he comes back, I think one of the things that he really wanted is a national championship out of this season. 
Next week, a triple header of college football Saturday presented by Kia Zero. First, USC taking on 13th ranked Washington, a Pac 10 battle. Then, Iowa State tries to break number four, Nebraska's 17 game home winning streak. And, highs can hopeful Joey Arrington leads sixth ranked Oregon into Arizona for a Pac 10 showdown. It all starts 3 30 p.m. Eastern, 12 30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Kingsbury, a perfect five of five on this drive for 31 yards. He's already got for the game 19 completions. Iowa State goes into Nebraska undefeated. Beat Baylor today to open up in their Big 12 action. Iowa State 41 to nothing over Baylor today. League opener, Nebraska close at half, 13 to three, pulled away from Mizzou in Columbia. What a phenomenal year for the Big 12. Seven teams went to bowl games last year. You think a similar number, if not more, could go to bowl games this year. And three teams this week in the top five alone. Now, fourth and six. For one of two on the fourth down tries, Kingsbury with plenty of time. What a point. He's got the first down. Carlos Francis. You know, most guys on fourth and four, they will eyeball one receiver. Not Cliff Kingsbury. Maybe he learned this when he was about four years old, his dad being a high school coach. Watch his vision. His vision is straight up the field. That's not where he's throwing the ball. He's going to throw it off to this side. He comes back to the secondary receiver on fourth and four. That guy, you talk about ice water in their veins. That's just ice. Just ice, not ice water. Pulled ice. it off on the young man we were talking about. Pulled it off against Quentin Jammer. Now out of the gun again. Going into the corner of the end zone. Nowhere close to Carlos Francis. A good throwaway, though. Good throwaway. He felt the pressure. I don't want to take a sack and move my team further back here. Kingsbury has already thrown for 152 yards. Leads the Big 12. 325 a game over the first two. And as we've seen, he can go underneath or he can go downfield. Eight for 58 in this drive that started back at the 26. Momentum shifting a little bit towards the Red Raiders. Second and 10 for the 16. Underneath, Roberts down to the nine, his favorite target so far, tripped up by D.D. Lewis, the middle linebacker. Patience, 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 patience. I don't know if Cliff Kingsbury practices yoga or chants or something like that, but you have to be so patient in this offense. Take what the defense gives you and then occasionally try and get what you want. That's exactly what he's doing. You talk about Mike Leach. Is the offensive coordinator. He's down on the field. He has another coach on the field in Cliff Kingsbury. The son of a high school coach, and you can tell. Third and nine, or make it third and three. Kingsbury, end zone, throws it away. He, you know, he got hit late. No flag, and he's and, asking and, yeah, the referee yeah, he's right a, he's now, upset. John Bible, about it. Saying, come on, what, what does it take? I know I don't have on the burnt orange here, but that's one, two, three steps. Well, maybe he's a little off balance and just gets tapped, but he still gets tapped right in the chest. And those are big guns tapping him to <laughs> D.D. Lewis. Well, obviously not a lot of confidence in the kicking game. They're two and three on fourth down, just converted. This is a fourth and three. I would take points here. I'd take three. Spread the defense two to each side. Will Ricky Williams be involved? No! Kingsbury calls his own number. Did he get there? It'll short. depend upon the spot. I think he's a little short. Well, he's not short, but he's short of the mark. He's actually tall. 6'4", 210. <laughs> you know, and he's beefed up a little bit since last year. You know, Mike Leeds told us yesterday when talking about him as a coach's son, he says he's such a hard worker. He said he sets the standard for the entire team. You know, I like the call, and I, I like the fact that nobody can tell because the defense hadn't started pumping their fist, and the offense hadn't started pumping their fist. Longhorns hold on fourth and three. That's a heartbreaker for Texas Tech. Now they failed on fourth and two at the Texas 47. Now they failed on fourth and three. Down at the six-yard line. Mike Leach, definitely a gambler, though. First and 10 is brought to you by the American Red Cross. Please help assist the victims of the terrorist attack and their families. You can help right now. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW. That is 1-800-HELP-NOW or by visiting redcross.org.
Texas first down at their own six. Tough running by Ivan Williams for about four. Straight up the gut. Final minute. Nissan Halftime Report. Look at all the college football around the nation. Who is the next Rudy? A look at so many of the walk-ons in college football. A recap of our first half with Eric Clemens. Our Nissan Halftime Report. Who wants to be the next Rudy? Still a very big walk-on program at so many schools like Nebraska in the Big 12. Second and six on the delay. They didn't fool the Red Raiders, did they? Call timeout if you're Texas Tech here. Kevin Curtis wrapping up Ivan Williams. Well, Tech's got one timeout remaining. Make it two time Yes, one timeout remaining. Make Texas punt out of their own end zone. They won't stop it, though. Okay. And Texas. I don't think they have to take a snap. Yes, they do. It's about a second difference between the two clocks. Not much, though. And they won't. They're even, actually. So Chris Sims can head to the locker room after a very productive start tonight. A two-touchdown lead for the Longhorns in their league home opener of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Welcome back to Royal Texas Memorial Stadium for our Nissan Halftime Report. Texas leading Texas Tech 21 to 7 here at the break. Both offenses showing, especially late in that half, they can both move the ball up and down the field. Well, a beautiful Saturday evening here in Austin, Texas for this contest, but we had others around the country, especially involving the Big 12. It was number three in defending national champion Oklahoma against Kansas State, ranked number 11. An emotional patriotic moment at the start, second quarter. K-State down 14, and L. Roberson, 22 yards. This guy ran for over 100 yards on the day, pulled the catch to within seven. Later in the second, Hunter Wall, the lateral to Savage, who laterals back to Wall, who takes it to the house. He's got blockers in front, he scores, and Oklahoma won it by a point, 38 to 37. There's a score there. To Columbia, Missouri, fourth-ranked Nebraska taking on Mizzou and furling of the large flag there. Third quarter, Nebraska up 16-3. Eric Crouch escapes a tackle in the end zone that would have been a safety, and look at him go. One juke, two jukes, across the 20, three jukes. This is a running back. Are you kidding me? 95 yards for the touchdown. That is a school record. The Cornhuskers continue their winning streak over Missouri, 36-3, your final there. Now to Columbia, South Carolina, where the number 15 Gamecocks took on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Firefighters were honored at the start of that game. 218 left in the contest. Gamecocks down by six. Phil Petty hits Rod Trafford for a seven-yard TD. Lou Holtz can celebrate as South Carolina won that one by a point. And finally, we go to Evanston, Illinois, number 16 Northwestern against number 23 Michigan State. A moment of silence for Rashidi Wheeler and the September 11th attacks. 18 seconds left, state down four, and Herb Haygood takes the kickoff. 84 yards for the touchdown. That puts State up by two. But Northwestern's Zach Brewster hits a long completion to John Schreiger, setting up the game-winning field goal as time expires, and Northwestern wins by one, your final 27 to 26. So some exciting action around college football this afternoon. When we come back on the Nissan Halftime Report, we'll take a look at walk-ons who have proved very valuable, especially in the Big 12 Conference. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back. Back to Royal Texas Memorial Stadium here in Austin, Texas for the continuation of the Nissan Halftime Report and the Texas Longhorns leading the Texas Tech Red Raiders 21-7. They're a little more than afterthoughts on most college football rosters, non-scholarship players who rarely see the spotlight, but walk-ons have an important role in virtually every major college program in the country. Todd Donahoe has the story. He may be the most famous walk-on in college football history. He ate, drank, and slept football, and when he wasn't practicing, he visited an empty stadium, visualizing the day he would play for Notre Dame. If I can go to Notre Dame, I could be someone. Being a walk-on in college football isn't about being a star or being carried off on teammates' shoulders. For most, it's not about daydreaming of playing in the NFL. It's about getting an education in life and self-esteem. Today, Rudy Rudiger uses his experiences to motivate others. It was easy to quit. Notre Dame football for me. It was easy not to go to practice, but by the fact I didn't quit, by the fact I kept going, gave me accountability and responsibility in what I'm doing today and the other goals that I'm achieving today. 
Though they spent most of the games on the sidelines and many fans don't even know their names, walk-ons play an important supporting role. We probably couldn't function on a day-to-day -day basis in practice without their walk-ons because with the scholarship limits the way they are right now, your walk-on team and your walk-ons really are the prep teams that you work against every day. So we could not survive uh, if we didn't have walk-on players. But walk-ons are more than tackling dummies. Their determination can be inspirational. If you had to just nail down one quality that probably is found in all of your walk-ons, it is the, the ability to persevere through difficult circumstances. Because when most of the country says, we don't want you, we won't give you a scholarship, they find the mindset, the strength to work through that. Most walk-ons that we have here do work harder. And you know, they, they just push themselves just because they know that they're in that situation, that they just want to you know, get an award at the end of the week or get, get a scholarship at the end of the season. For most, their love of football outweighs the price of playing without a scholarship. But if dreams do come true, wouldn't that be nice? I took a chance and just, I was willing to work hard. So I look back and I think to myself, I worked hard and I'm still working hard. I'm not done by any means, but um, just I came into this, this system with the idea that I was going to work hard and uh, try to earn my spot here. And I have so far now, I just have to, have to keep and uh, excel from there. I'm just basically living a dream. So uh, the only way I can say it in quotes, you know, it's living a dream and I'm just going to continue living it. But dreams come in different forms. Some are short lived but memories last a lifetime. I only played 27 seconds, but the fact of the journey that it took me to play those 27 seconds was worth that moment that they gave me at Notre Dame. While others can achieve a long-lasting career reaching the big time. But that was my only way to go, to go to school there. And so I decided to, to walk on, and, and uh, if I was good enough, I'd earn a scholarship. And if I wasn't good enough, then I shouldn't have gotten a scholarship in the first place. So it ended up OK, I think. Still, life as a non-scholarship athlete begins with some built-in challenges. I think the number one hurdle that all walk-ons uh, face is earning the peer respect because they come in with this feeling like, do I really belong? There's some pressure and there's some downtimes too. It's tough to, to keep a positive attitude all the time, especially when, uh, when you, you want some opportunities that maybe aren't there. The obstacles for walk-ons are tough. But the man who had a movie named after him believes every young player willing to take his best shot will be rewarded. I want to tell a walk on you have, you have a commitment there. No matter how tough it gets, no matter how long it takes you to be part of that football team, it's worth it. Because what you're really, really challenging is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. If you quit on something you want to do when things get tough after football and after you graduate from uh, college, you're going to quit too. So don't quit now. It's going to pay off. Walk-ons very valuable in major college programs here at Texas. Place kicker Dusty Mangum and special teams guru Michael Ungar have both been very, very solid walk-ons. Well, the Nissan Halftime Report will continue. We'll send it back to James Lofton, also upstairs, to recap the Longhorns in their 21-7 lead. One. Nissan Halftime Report, Eric Clemens on the field. Now time to catch you up with a recap of the first half action. Let's join James Lofton and Joel Myers. Guys? All right, thank you, Eric. And what a red-hot start for the Texas Longhorns are offensively, and especially the firm of Williams and Williams, Ivan and Roy. And we talked about their balance, uh, 15 runs and 15, 16 passes. And all they need is more guys by the name of Williams to hand the ball to. You see Ivan Williams here. And, of course, there's the other Williams, the big, tall, slender Williams, and that would be Roy Williams. We got him off early. Career high for Roy Williams in this ballgame. He had nine receptions in the first half. So he's zeroing in on the Longhorn single game record of 12 set by Eric Metcalf. And somebody had to get it to Roy Williams. And Chris Sims, all he did was hit his first 10 tries of the night. We'll be back with the second half kickoff. Ball Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. Fourteen point lead for the Longhorns as we get ready for the start of the second half. Mike Leach gambling on fourth down on three opportunities. 
in the first 30 minutes of play. A very strong start for Mac Brown on the other side, although the last two times they had the ball, three and out with a punt for the Texas Longhorn. And you talked about Mike Leach gambling. If he doesn't gamble, if he plays a conservative, they have six points with two field goals maybe. But they tried to go for it. And, you know, I have to respect him because you have a chance to maybe stick it in the end zone and make it a really close game. You're not going to beat Texas by lining up and kicking field goals. There's such an explosive offense. Well, on the first one, I don't blame him at all because it would have been a long field right. goal attempt. On the last one, it's interesting. I was watching this place kicker, Robert Trees, before the game, and he was okay around 30, 35 yards away. Outside of 35, though. A little shaky. You said it. No, you said it. Victor Reich, Irvis Hill, going back deep for the Longhorns. <laughs> I always defer to you, James. Get some good wood in that one. Right house kicks it away, the putter over the head of Victor Reich. FedEx ground stats, Ivan Williams, couple to the left side. Up the middle, pretty balanced, James. Yeah, and when this season started, they had Ivan Williams, Cedric Benson, and Victor Reich, and also Brett Robbins, their third down back. And when we talked to uh, Greg Davis, the offense coordinator, said, you know, the guys are starting to separate themselves. And we really can go with two. And last week, Ivan Williams had over 100 yards, and Cedric Benson had 74 yards as his backup. So they really are running the ball much better this time of year than they were a year ago. Real balance, 91 yards on the ground in the first half, 100 through the air for the Texas Longhorns. Sims throwing on first down and denied the double move. Roy Williams hit early with the ball in the air by C.J. Johnson. See, now that ball's thrown off the mark, almost thrown away. There's no way Roy Williams catches that, even though there's a little bump between the two of them. Field judge came running in to say it wasn't catchable. I think you waved that off. And it really was a busted play. Holding on the defense wow. on an eligible pass receiver before the pass was thrown. Ten yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. First half numbers, and we were just talking about the balance of the Texas Longhorns, and they had exactly that compared to the passing, top-heavy passing yards for Texas Tech. But I still think if you double that for Texas Tech, 110 yards rushing, they would gladly take that week in and week out because they're right on pace for their passing totals. All they need to do now is convert some third downs and stick the ball in the end zone. The markoff puts it at the 30, a Longhorn first down. Coming back to Roy Williams on a lateral pass. Van Johnson stayed at home. A senior from San Antonio. Knocking out Roy Williams. Loss of a yard. Bringing up second and 11. Chris Sims in the first half. 13 of 15. 130 yards with one touchdown toss. He had 86 consecutive passes without an interception before he was picked off last week at Houston. And that is the 10th catch for Roy Williams. So adding to a personal high. His career best was six coming in tonight. Three in the pattern. Ivan Williams breaking tackles. He's got a first down and another dozen, almost 13 yards. The sophomore running back from Cleveland, Texas. Boy, the, the offensive line does such a great job in getting guys off the ball. It's almost like you take a big tractor and you just move everybody back five yards to say, okay, back up, back up. We got big equipment coming through here, and the big equipment just happens to wear number 26, Ivan Williams. Now Greg Davis, their offensive coordinator, said we are a right-handed team because of Antoine Kirk Hughes and Mike Williams, the guard and tackle, and the senior fifth-year center, Matthew Anderson. 12 carries, 82 yards now for Ivan Williams. Sims surveying the situation. Perfect toss. Bo Scape again is tight end. Sims has been on since the start of the game. He really has. We got a little injury here, though. Got a player down for Texas. You'll see it from the end zone. I think it's Ivan Williams, the big right tackle, but right there over the middle, Bo Scape and Paul McClendon. I tell you what, he will stick his head into the pile. You talk about dynamic players, Mike Williams, 6'6", 345 pounds, unique athletic ability from the colony that's just north of uh, the Dallas area. And this guy is a terrific player. We have number 63, but he's actually number 63. I said number 66 on the ground. It was number Good to see him get up and get off the field. A guy that's going to be playing on Sundays, James. 
Pretty good shot. I called him number 66. His number gets bunched up so much <laughs> on that jersey. It looked like number 66, but he's number 63. They like to run right behind Williams. And Kirk Hughes, Matt Anderson as well. Group that's been together for a long time now. Robbie Doan's done a good job as well at left tackle. He passed the test against Julius Peppers with the defensive end of North Carolina. Peppers couldn't get into the backfield around Doan on the left side. It was a huge win over North Carolina. Quality opponent. Sims. There's the double move. Roy Williams, and he was trying to avoid the hit while taking it at the same time McClendon was lining it up. Make the catch first. Roy Williams is so talented. He's thinking end zone. He's thinking all I have to do, plant on my left foot as I catch this ball, slide inside the free safety and score. All that's good in theory. It's like going to one of those physics classes that professor starts talking. If you miss the first thing he said, you're lost. If you don't catch the ball, all those moves after the catch don't mean anything. Free safety, McClendon waiting for him, but as you mentioned, Williams has to hang on. Second and ten for Sims in the offense. Play clock winding down, they barely get it off in time. And Ivan Williams gets about four again towards the right side of center. So a third and six coming up for the Texas Longhorns. 3-0 and for the first time since 1994. Huge Matthew Anderson. You see 62, 61. Tillman Holloway, another 300-pounder. It's a massive offensive line. Well, Mike Williams goes out at 6'6", 345, and they bring in a little guy, Lionel Gar, 6'7", 335. A little tight. He's still growing. Third and six. Four wide receivers for Sims. Empty backfield and a dead ball foul. It almost looked like Chris Sims started leaning a little early. Delay of game. Delay. Delay. You know, we were just talking about the offensive line, and there's Matthew Anderson, their center. We've been talking about him before. He's a guy who's already got two degrees, corporate communication and government. Big number 62, the man in the middle of the quarterback of the offensive line. And he started graduate work at the LBJ School of Public Affairs as well. Bright young man. He'd like to run for public office. He's very interested in government. Three of five so far on the third down tries. First half, they averaged 7.1 yards per snap. They didn't have a lot of third and shorts. Over the middle again, it's available. Another first down. Well, all of a sudden, it was coming out part of the most gave last week. The career best five catches. That one good for 20 yards. You know, if you have a target like Bo Scape, you've got to slow him down a little bit. But you have Lawrence Flugens in, in, in the pass rush. He doesn't get a hand on him, and he just has a free run down the field. And here's a guy who has had a couple of ACL injuries. Injuries come back, worked hard. Tremendous athlete, Bo State. Texas Tech needs a timeout. Horns are rolling again, two and a half into the third quarter. Second half starts like the first half for Chris Sims in Texas. Sims on this drive alone, three of four, 36 yards passing. 16 of 19 for the contest, 166 yards. And he's got a first down to the completion to skate. Ivan Williams banging his way inside the 18 down to the 16. Lugents wrapped him up. The middle linebacker, the junior from Klein, Texas. Well, they get him back on their heels a little bit by throwing the ball downfield. Then all of a sudden, let's feature Ivan Williams again. And you have an offensive line that is big. They come off the ball quickly. They maintain their blocks, and then you get a big runner like Ivan Williams behind it. Even though Lawrence Flugent's the middle linebacker making the stop, he's making it five yards down the field. Sims in control on a second and six. Slowed out of him playing a first and goal. Keep those wheels spinning. 
And he is alone, as Greg Davis said, a load that runs with reckless abandon, abandon when he talks about Ivan Williams at 235. You know, I think the tough thing for Greg McMack and the defensive coordinator, if you apply pressure, if you come after Chris Sims with the blitz, he has such a hot and a comfortable hand right now, he's going to get you downfield. If you sit back and you play zone, you don't pressure the line of scrimmage, Ivan Williams is going to kill you with the run. Longhorns first and goal. The A of the Red Raiders. Williams back against the grain, look out, barely tripped up. Otherwise, he's got his second touchdown of the night. Jonathan Hawkins saved the score. They got the middle linebacker, didn't they? Yeah, well, number 46, Matt Tressel, I think he gets through. It's a nice lead block, and there's a Ivan Williams running, and then you see Matt Trussell, 46, down on the goal line. That's his lead blocker. His lead blocker got to the goal line. The running back should get to the goal line. New career best for Ivan Williams, and we're only early in the third. 16 carries, 106 yards. He had 103 last week, didn't touch into the fourth quarter. They get the call. He's got a second touchdown. Red Raiders made some adjustments in the second quarter. Well, the Longhorns got into the locker room and they made adjustments of their own. I think the offensive line went in to eat. Went in and had some burgers and they came out ready to play. You know, I can't argue with a sick mind. <laughs> <laughs> Longhorns trying to go up by three touchdowns. Mang them in for the extra point. It is now 28 to seven. Big night again for the sophomore running back, Ivan Williams. We still haven't seen Cedric Benson all that. Burger King Longhorn scoring drive. Ivan Williams wrapped up the 80-yard marks to start for the second half. Victor McCann waits for the short kick. He'll take it near the 11. Slowed down at the 20. And he loses the football. Texas still scrambling. Do the Longhorns have it? Yes, they do. I want to say Derek Johnson, number 11, ripped that ball out. Bottom of the pile for the Longhorns, Michael Huff. And was it Hightower or Huff? Hightower. Yeah, it's a nice return going, and they're going to have decent field position. It's going to power right there. Derek Johnson, number 11. We call him Superman. Boy, we talked about his ability to strike, his quickness. You see a little upper body strength there ripping that ball out. Well, doesn't start. Second of the team and tackles behind the line. Already had a couple of sacks. True freshman. Outside linebacker, Derek Johnson. Hightower with the cover. Movement up front, three down. Ivan Williams. Take it. Wow. And like it as he lowers his shoulder for nine. He likes to offer some punishment to the opposition on his way. Some guys like to make you miss, not Ivan. Ivan Williams, you know, he doesn't even shift it to the other arm so he can really dip the shoulder. <laughs> but Anthony Terrell, boom. How you doing? Second in the yard at the three. If, Ivan Williams, what a horse. If you think Ivan Williams is good now, he <laughs> averaged 13 yards a carry in high school. 13. It's a shame the Horns don't have any depth. Wow. And I mentioned on the way to break, we haven't seen Cedric Benson at all tonight. He's only got three carries. Eight, 18 for 116. Chris Sims with the split backfield. Williams Didn't just get barely in. denied. He's got a first and goal, though. Jonathan Hawkins again, the outside linebacker, Kenny Williams. Level of concentration, it's there. And almost the touchdown. He's looking for his third of the night. Guess who's going to get it? You know, the running back gets all the glory, but the offensive lineman loves soaking this up, too. Sims wants one. Sims has one. Sims has two. That's his second of the night. He's a running machine. 
He's big on plunges. Two quarterbacks big touchdowns. So it's ironic with all the passing Sims has done at Roy Williams, 10 grabs. They've got four rushing scores tonight. We've seen Texas good on offense, good on defense, and also on special teams. Texas Tech had been great returning kickoffs. They've taken that away from them, and they also forced a turnover on the last kickoff return. Well, number five Longhorns looking impressive. The Big 12 opener. Mangum makes it. A 28-point lead. All created, though, don't forget, by the big play on special teams by Derek Johnson, the true freshman. What? From bad to worse for Texas Tech, another Burger King Texas scoring drive. Three in less than a minute, covering 13 yards after the turnover. The recovery by a high tower, forced by Johnson. And Chris Sims with the score. They can. Waiting for the kickoff. He'll take it to the eight. He gets some room. He closes, but he beats it past the 30. Made a miss all the way to the 36-yard line. Bo Trejon making the stop. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Zero. One company, countless solutions. By Warner Brothers, new motion picture training day in theaters everywhere starting Friday, October 5th. And by the best damn sports show period, weeknight, 7.30, 11.30 only on Fox Sports Net. Just a little more than five minutes gone in the third quarter. And this is the first time Cliff Kingsbury and the Texas Tech Red Raider offense has been on the field in the second half. And Texas already has 14. The screen for Ricky Williams. Pass the 40. Up to the 42, or D.D. Lewis tracks him down. Eric, what's the latest? All right, the latest on Mike Williams is he's having his left leg ice, is what representatives of the University of Texas tell me on the sidelines here. He's going to be reevaluated later, so that means his return to the game is questionable, but it didn't look like their offensive line suffered at all on those last couple drives, guys. How much ice does it take to <laughs> for a leg like that? Well, I'll tell you one thing. So with the way Eric worded bags. it, with the way Eric worded it, he could be a White House spokesperson. Throw by Kingsbury, too low for his intended target, Mickey Peters. Kingsbury's pass. So now it's going to bring up third, just about five from the 42. Mike Williams is trying to get back in this ball game because not only is it this ball game, but it's also next week's ball game. And and you know, mentally he's thinking, I want to finish this one out, see if I can go. He's got a little smile on his face, but he's, he's concerned about whether that leg is going to hold up because it's a lot of meat on those bones and tendons there. And next week's ball game, that's a big one. At the Cotton Bowl with the Sooners. Kingsbury on third and five. They're three of ten. Will nope. they get to the marker? No. D. D. The middle linebacker Lewis. getting to Peters. Does that mean defense, defense, Lewis? I thought all his eligibility was gone. He played for the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, he made a nice play on the screen on first down against Ricky Williams, and here he is. That's just a perfect form tackle. Gets his head in front. Ball carrier has no chance to advance there, and he locks up, wraps up, and gets up and doesn't talk any Mac. Well, the last thing Texas Tech needed on their opening series, though, three and out with a punt, and they're going for it on a fake, and what a shot! on Carlos Francis. Give me a break. Yeah, he's getting God. the flag. He's got his helmet off. You know, Mac Brown I just hope the young man is okay. Sportsmanship. Th that, you know, I understand the big hit, but you can have a big hit, and Mac is all over him because he doesn't want to see that. Now, he's saying maybe his helmet came off because of the hit. His helmet might have come off because of the hit, but his actions on the field and other guys going out there off the bench to celebrate with him. I understand the emotion of the moment, but also you got a guy out there who's lying motionless on the field. You don't celebrate on top of him. Well, good to see Francis up, but he is certainly wobbling. You talked about this crowd being into it. They're into it. Now, as we saw it, it was pretty automatic they hit. It wasn't like he led with his helmet. 
Mac Brown is telling him to get off the field too. Unsportsmanlike conduct. It'll be Texas's football with a 15-yard penalty. First down. Good call by the officials. Yes. John Bible heading up this Big 12 crew. And let's cross our fingers now that Carlos Francis and, is okay. And Carlos Francis is a tough kid, but the, I mean, he's running down the field 40 yards, full speed, and that's helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. And that's a safety who's even a little bit larger yeah. than a wide receiver. Francis 5'9", 180. Vasher 5'11", 180. But all the momentum belonged to Vasher on that play. Uh, I remember from my physics class, force equals mass times acceleration. There's a lot of mass, 360 pounds, and there was definitely some acceleration going on both ends. The pass, let's not forget by Greathouse, was on target. It was right there Man, I like on the, the gadget I like the play. gamble by Mike Lee. Yes, I do too. Benson into the contest. Sims throwing on deep. first down. Roy Williams. And once Roy Williams singled, and it was late on the throw, oh. with a flag down in the play against Jose Leo Hansen. You know, there should be another category of interference when you're going up against a guy like Roy Williams. You're, you're giving away about eight inches and about 25 or 30 pounds. You should be able to bump him just a little bit. <laughs> Got flagged down on the opposite side of the field, too. See it right at the tail end of the play. On the play. Both on the defense. Defense is holding on an eligible pass receiver. That penalty will be the flag. Defensive pass interference. That penalty will be enforced. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, Greg McMacken is frustrated because he rolled the dice on that one. He came after him with the little blitz. He had good one-on-one -on -one coverage. Hanson let uh, Roy Williams get inside of him just a little bit. And once he gets that big body inside of you, there, there's nothing else you can do. And you know what? Greg McMacken would rather take that 15 yards than the big catch. And we did see the left arm of Hanson. It was already around well, you know, the he, body he of Williams. He played it like a pro, though. That's what you do because you, you strip the ball with the right arm. You use the left arm to tug the body and to turn him away so he can't make the catch. Benson out of the backfield. Racked up by Aaron Hunt, the junior from Denison, Texas. Loss of a yard. Yeah, you can tell a lot about a team when, when they get down by 28 points. The intensity that they play with. And a guy like Aaron Hunt, one of the leaders to step up and be ready to play. Well, this fall baseball's postseason unfolds on Fox. First state of baseball's best battle it out. American National League Division Series, both on Fox and Fox Family. ALCS and LCS all the way to the crowning, the 2001 World Series. I think they found that Barry Bonds ball yet. It's wet, but they've got it. There goes Benson. On second and about 11, he gets eight. Hawkins, the outside linebacker, and that's good news. Yeah, that, See that, Carlos that, Francis, up. Yeah. he's okay. It it. I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Well, our prayers were answered. But those on that guys one. from Oklahoma hit awfully hard. That's what he said. <laughs> we got up. He didn't know which corner Man. to go to. Do I go to the blue corner or the red yep. corner? Yep. He'll, he'll be answering the phone until about Wednesday. Third and three. You're tough and mixed company. Got Roy Williams going straight down the field. Sims with time. Oh. And it's batted down and intercepted. Inter Deflected and intercepted. Lamont Anderson. The only bad thing about that, I want a guy like Lamont Anderson running with it after the catch. I want to see him rumble. That's what I live for. You like football follies. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the big guys will tell you about how well they run with the ball, but then when you really get to see it, it's not a pretty sight. A sore spot for Chris Sims over the first three games. He's had 17 balls deflected, batted yeah. down. And here's another one for a 6'5 quarterback. Roy Williams was the target. They got a chance to get back in the ball game a little bit, get some momentum back on their side, Texas Tech. Tech's got it after the turnover. The first by Texas at their own 38. Up Welker. the field. Don't dance. Look out. Shots along the way. Cleaning up from behind, Maurice Gordon. 
when you start to dance like that and you don't move forward, you're running about as fast as those numbers are on the field. When you get a defense like Texas, everybody's running to that football. That's what defensive players are taught to do. They don't stand around and say, okay, the, the secondary will make this tackle. Those defensive linemen are coming. Second and eight, approaching the six-minute mark of the third quarter. Didn't think it would be this early or this easy this early for the Longhorns. That's deflected. Lineman timing it perfectly up front. Kalen Thornton, and he's made big plays defensively. You know, when your offensive line does a good job protecting you, and, and that's what Texas Tech is doing right now, the penalty comes when the defensive linemen just stand there at the line of scrimmage. They're smart enough. They're watching that quarterback. They're saying, I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get there. I'm going to get my hands up. And Kalen Thornton, he's getting double teamed, so he gets up, and he knocks that ball up in the air. Good job by Kalen Thornton. You can still make a play even if you're not pressuring the quarterback. Three of 13 on third downs. Kingsbury, a long third down. It was more to the defensive back, Babers, than the wide receiver, Page. Well, he's throwing for their big receiver, Anton Page, junior college transfer. They like him a lot. He had some hamstring injuries early on, so he's not involved in the total system. That ball was thrown a little more inside than where he was. So I'm thinking if I'm picking a guy who's a little off on that, I'm thinking it's Page. But a good route, just get that ball to the outside. Are we going to see a punter not on fourth and eight? 35-7. They've gone for it on fourth down. A number of times already. You know who's on the sideline getting ready? Major Apple. They're two of five on their fourth down tries. And that hurts. Texas Tech has already used their second in the second half. There's, there's Major. And look, look at look at Sloan Thomas going over there, buddying up to Major Apple. Didn't Politics. have a word to say to him Politics. for the first two quarters. Now he's going, hey, hey, Major. What's up? Hey, Rumi. Yeah. <laughs> How about that chocolate milkshake I'm supposed to buy you for with that touchdown pass uh, you throw me later? smile on Sloan Thomas's face. <laughs> One of the assistants came over and picked up on oh, your, yeah. your theory. <laughs> well, television's most unique brand of football commentary returns tomorrow with NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. This week, Jay Moore will visit Eagles camp. Boomer is icing breaking down, and what a matchup the Ravens and Broncos game on Cyber Strader. The gang will take a look at the struggling Minnesota Vikings, the bickering Vikings. NFL this morning, the pregame show that's not really a pregame show. Tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Boy, what a matchup. Ravens and Broncos, who do you like? Uh, Broncos are playing at home. Tough to beat in the old Mile High Stadium, and they're probably tough to beat in the new Mile High Stadium. As Anton Page talking about, you know, coach, he was inside of me, so I kind of broke to the outside. You know, Mike Leach made this playbook. <laughs> you don't tell him why you were doing it. He tells you what you're supposed to be doing. And he's used it a few places. Kentucky, Valdosta State, Oklahoma, and now Texas Tech. Fourth and eight. This is their longest fourth down try. Three-man rush, gotcha. so plenty of time. And Williams won't get there. Uh oh, man. And pays the price on the sideline from Quentin Jammer. Number two, Ricky Williams on the reception. Number six, Quentin Jammer. Another big pop. Yeah, that's a little bit on the white there. I was going he to say, he had already stepped out. Could have got a flag there. So taking over. At the Texas Tech, 43. Second time already this half. They started with the ball in Tech territory. Texas is out game Tech, 315 to 226. Williams slowed down. Short gain, only two. It's a good play by number 95, Rodney McKinney. You know, nothing's going your way. It's easy to get out there and mope around. No, you go out there. You play defense, regardless of where it is. You, know, you would have liked to have a 50-yard punt, pin them back inside the 10. Just go out there and play. He's the big play maker over the first two this year. Three sacks. One of the top junior college defensive linemen of the country last year, transferring from Mississippi Delta Community College, but unfortunately hobbling over the sideline as soon as we start talking about him. Got a little junk in his trunk. I'm not going to quote you on that one. Second and eight from the 41. <laughs> 
Ivan Williams turning the corner. Close to another first down. And we've learned from Eric Clemens down on the sideline that Mike Williams is available now if needed. But I don't know if you want to bring him back when you're up by 28 moving. You know, when we talked to Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator yesterday, he said, you know, I might have made a mistake last year in, in quote, our preseason before we got into Big 12 play in, in getting pass happy, throwing the ball a little too much. He said, this year, early on, we emphasized the run a little more, and, and I think the run, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, will open up the pass. And they have been so effective moving the ball first four ball games this year. 120 yards a game over the first three, James. 46 a contest, fifth in the nation in scoring. Adjustment in the backfield for Williams. Maybe two, Jonathan Hawkins he wrapping him up. Mike Williams trotting back out there. That's great news. Be because. And this it, crowd knows. It. And it's good for the other offensive linemen to see that Big Daddy's coming back on. I mean, it, every group has its leader. And Mike Williams, obviously, is the leader of this group. He could have stayed on the sideline and just said, hey, you, you know, I'll just take a couple days off. But Antoine Kirk Hughes gets to come out. Derek Dockery comes in. Tillman Holloway's in. So they've got six in that rotation, six guys who are starters. Three season starter, the senior from Colony, Texas, back in the lineup. Mike Williams. Sims on the play fake on second and eight. Time and available. B.J. Johnson, first down to the 17 in front of Jose Leo Hansen. Now we've seen Chris Sims throw a lot of balls today. If he were a baseball pitcher, that's the 99 mile hour fastball right there. It worked again. First and 10 is brought to you by the American Red Cross. Please help assist the victims of the terrorist attack and their families. You can help right now. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW. 1-800-HELP-NOW or by visiting redcross.org. First and 10 at the 17 of Texas Tech. The horn just roll right along with three and a half to play in the third. Two tight end set for Ivan Williams to pick his way. Down to the 14. Cedric, who? The junior from Klein, Texas, oh, Lawrence Bluchens. Middle linebacker made the stop. Well, we saw Cedric Benson in the opener. Last week he broke out for 74, while Williams had 103. But Williams has such a rhythm tonight. Tough to take him out. He's got 23 carries for 133 yards. It, it, it's one thing to have a good 11 on each side, but Mac Brown said, we got 44 guys. 44 guys who can play. So they have that depth. And what I have to tell those guys who are listed as second string, they're going to get their 20 plays a game. Two tight ends for Ivan Williams again. And he's chopped down in the backfield. Aaron Hunt, who you were talking about before the game, the junior from Denison, Texas. Very active, quick defensive end at 6'3", 260, makes it. And you know what? That's the way to slow Ivan Williams down. Make him chop his feet behind the line of scrimmage. Now, if you're looking at next week's ball game against Oklahoma, great against the run. Calmus, Roy Williams, all those guys up front, they really penetrate well. And you get a guy like Ivan Williams, if he gets past that first wave, boy, he's trouble. And then you get Cedric Benson, who has a great acceleration. So they've got two choices at running back. What about a gadget play? Brett Robbins in the backfield. Sims on third and nine. Robin out of the backfield on the screen. Slips out to the 15. Will it get there? No. Knocked down. Good play in the open field by Jonathan Hawkins. So it took a while to get there. Good reaction time as well by Texas Tech and a field goal attempt coming up for Dusty Mangum, who is seven of eight so far this season. True freshman from Mesquite, Texas. He came in as a walk-on. Had never kicked in a college game, and he was a very late ad and won the job among two other kickers. Close to perfect for the Longhorns. He's already got a 51-yard or two. Through the form, and it hits the upright. You know, he tried to place that through instead of really just taking a good swing at it. And did you see the disappointment on the guy who's standing next to the cannon? <laughs> He's going like, hey, come on. I'm ready to shoot the cannon. So he got through it well. As you said, maybe did he try to guide it off the tee? And yeah, the first tee at that, because it was his first try of the night. And you know, when he goes back to sideline, everybody who's ever lined up to kick one in practice has advice from him. Looks like he's leaning to the left a little bit and pushes it out to the right. And I don't know if that means anything in kicking lingo. We get a, a kicking coach out there who can write in and tell us next week. 31-yard attempt by Magnum. It would have been good 
from about 50 had it been on line. He had that much foot into it. And on first down from the 20. Cool. Nehemiah Glover gets it. Just past the 24, brought down by D.D. Lewis. Look at the Cannon guy. He's ready. He's gone. And look at the Cannon guy's girlfriend. She's going, oh, you don't get to shoot the Cannon. I don't know. That's pretty good poker face. But he's from Texas. <laughs> you couldn't tell? <laughs> Great shot. It's the little things. Second and six for the 24 for Kingsbury. They're looking for their first sack of the night. And he just throws it away. Boy, that wall just pushed the offensive line right into their quarterback. Corey Redding had a good charge. They were coming that time. They said, okay, you can you can run a gadget play, all that. I don't care. I'm blowing past my guy and getting after the quarterback. So now third and about six. Kingsbury's completed 27 of 42 for 100. 70 yards, make it 175 yards. But this is only the second time he's been on the field in the second half or in the final minute. Well, he's got everybody bunched up in a pretty tight little area. Short side of the field at that. Plenty of time for Kingsbury. Down the field. And he's got his target. And he he's had, also he had got Ricky the first Williams down. deeper than Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones, the senior from Lubbock. You know, well, you like big wide splits if you want to keep the speed rushes on the edge away. So you get those big splits on the outside. Those guys can't come around the corner. And they're not great for running the football in between. But if you are trying to keep the speed rushes away, and that's what you want to do in this air raid offense, do a great job on the outside with those tackles. First first down of the second half. Mangum on the quick hitter. Or check that Kingsbury, rather, on the quick hitter. Has another first down, King Scoville this time. The senior from Dallas. You still thinking about the kicker and not getting I'm, to shoot the cannon and all that? The cannon guy just got me. <laughs> bang, bang, he got me, he shot me down. From the 46. Shovel didn't fool anybody. It should go as an incomplete pass. Yeah, but he caught it, though. Marcus Tufts all over the play to Ricky Williams and that'll be the final snap of the third quarter one that completely got away from Texas Tech the Longhorns offense and turnovers and a lot of Ivan Williams boss the Red Raiders end of three all Longhorns We get ready for the start of the fourth quarter, and welcome back to Austin once again. Joel Myers along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens downstairs. Some question whether Texas deserved a number five ranking coming into the game. I think they've made some believers now. Well, the funny thing, when we went met with Texas on uh, Friday, they talked about Miami and how good Miami looked Thursday night on television. Well, I'm wondering if the guys in South Florida are watching these guys in Austin saying, hey, these guys in Texas look pretty good because Hey, they don't really have a weakness. There's nothing that jumps out at you. They play offense, defense, and they play pretty solid on special teams. And James, as much as we've been talking about the Longhorn offensive unit tonight, and they have been very strong. Five yard penalty, remain second down. Let's not forget put about the clock back to 15 minutes. We will. Let's not forget about <laughs> what the Longhorns have done defensively tonight against a pretty strong offensive unit and a really good-looking quarterback. But the, the one thing about it, now they're playing against Oklahoma next week who runs the same offense. Oklahoma has a week to study what Texas did well in this ballgame and figure out what they can do against it. So now with the mark off, second and 22 for Kingsbury and the Red Raiders. More heat on Cliff. Dances away nicely and finds... Wes Welker into Texas territory now to the 44 FedEx numbers on Cliff Kingsbury and how he has distributed the ball tonight to his wide receivers his tight ends as well and I say running backs it could be singular Ricky Williams yeah I think he's doing a good job but look at the running back the yardage only 25 yards on 12 receptions that's not good numbers, but the wide receivers 13 for 116 yards. That's good. And the tight ends in the middle of the field. They've done their job also. So now third and almost eight. 
Three-man rush for Texas. And they get close to Kingsbury. What a grab. Thrown behind Carlos Francis, who's back in there, which is even more amazing. First time I saw Cliff Kingsbury was in 1999 against Arizona State. He came in. He was a gangly quarterback. He's got good size, good strength, and he has a rocket on an arm for a guy. When you get off the bus, you'd expect him to be carrying a tuba. This guy has worked in the weight room, talked about a coach's son. Granted, he knew the game, but now he's getting the physical prowess to go along with it. First and 10, Texas Tech. Tuba's heavy, though. You are a classic. And it's early in the season. Get down. Welker's got it again. He's got it about six or seven. West You're talking about the gun of Kingsbury. Because his guys are distributing themselves around the field. They're sitting down in the zone coverage. He's looking, he's looking, and then boom, ball comes out. And Wes Welker does a nice job of catching that ball in his hands. But look at that. Six orange shirts over there on that play. That's hustle. Yep. These guys go hard every play. I don't see guys taking the play off. Second and short, Kingsbury automatizing, changing the play at the line into the gun. Instead of Ricky Williams, other side, Nehemiah Glover. What a oh, shot yeah. Babers put Babers on him. Nice play. Wes Welker can't get out and knock Babers out of the uh, run lane. Babers on the tackle for Texas. There's Carl Reese. Talked about a guy who wanted speed. I'm pretty sure Carl Reese drives a fast car during the offseason. Well, maybe not. He has enough fast players to keep him happy. Well, he gave his defensive unit a D last week against the University of Houston Cougars after they gave up better than 400 yards. I think he's pretty pleased with what they're doing against Kingsbury. And this group that averages 42 points a game coming in. Tech driving from their own 21. It is Welker again. Trying to scramble for the first down, sliding over to the right side. He may have it by the length of the football. Everett Rawls bringing him back. Third quarter killed Mike Leach's squad. Texas out gaining Tech, 124 to 39. It's Stanford above Southern California, 21-10, fourth quarter. Just thought I'd mention that. I saw it go by the screen. You Cardinal, you. You missed it. Were you an Indian or a Cardinal? I was a Cardinal. <laughs> For a while, I thought it was going to be a tree. <laughs> you don't miss a shot. So the measurement first and down. another first down for Texas Tech comes with just about three minutes gone in the fourth quarter. And, and, and these guys, Texas Tech, Mac Brown's looking across the field. Texas Tech is earning this. I mean, this is a hard fought game. Both teams are playing well. They came prepared. Texas has made their breaks in the ball game. They've executed well. Texas Tech has hung in there. They've definitely hung in there. A couple of turnovers have hurt a big time. Kingsbury welcomes his favorite target. Welcome with another reception, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Brought down by Nathan Basher. A strong safety. That is the eighth grab for Welker. What they're missing, and Texas gave it up last week. They gave up nine big plays last week. But they account for big plays in their defense. I think it's run over 15 and pass over 20. They gave up nine of those last week. I think they've given up one big play tonight. We had the big run by Ricky Williams that, that really pierced him. Yeah, that was the 31-yard score, the only score of the night for Texas Tech. On second down. Going to the boundary. Good throw. Daryl Jones diving for the reception. Another first down. Eric Clemens, what's cooking? Eric Clemens. All right, guys, here's our game summary for you. Brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. Chris Sims, some nice numbers tonight. Only four missed passes and one deflection for an interception. Roy Williams, a new career high with 10 catches. And look at the rushing yards. Texas, way ahead of Texas Tech by more than 100. Total performance by Texas. Now they try to keep them out of the end zone a second time. The dump off, Ricky Williams pays again. Derek Johnson, the true freshman. He only comes out for the big plays, right? And Ricky Williams is frustrated because he's thinking, you know, let's get the ball up the field. You're throwing me the ball at the line of scrimmage with this type of speed. 
Derek Johnson making the stop there. They've had an answer just about every time for Kingsbury. Have we seen a missed tackle in the Texas second? I don't, I don't want to jinx them, but I haven't seen one yet. Kingsbury has now completed 10 in a row, make it 11 in a row. Daryl Jones belted out of bounds. Vasher. Vasher again. First, strong first safety. guy up makes the hit. He got a flag down, probably have a little holding. They're trying to get that seal where the guy can run through, but you get a hold on the outside. I think it was Carlos Francis. Good call. I think it's incredible that Carlos Francis is simply back in the game yeah. after the shot he took. He thinks it's the first quarter, though. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remain second down. Carlos Francis on a fake punt took a shot from Nathan Vasher. And we didn't think he'd come back into the game. He and, wobbled over to the sideline. And I single Carlos Francis out on the hold, but it's it's the hustle, it's the speed of the guy from Texas. That guy's running by you, and you're thinking, well, I don't want my guy to get blown up. So I'm going to grab him a little bit, and he keeps going by you, and you're away from the framework of the body, and you get the holding call. Mark it off at second and 17. Kingsbury. Cole Roberts on can't, the receiving end. can't run sideways against this team. Babers on the pop and for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in once again with Eric Clements. Eric? Well, number three, Oklahoma, the defending national champs, hold off Kansas State in Norman. And there it is, an emotional patriotic moment at the start, as is everywhere in America these days. And that's second quarter down by 14, L. Roberson. 22-yard run to bring the Cats to it in seven. Later in the second, Hunter Wall, the lateral to Antoine Savage, who laterals back to Hunter Wall, will take it to the house for the touchdown, and Oklahoma wins by a point. Guys? Right, I was Eric. impressed with L. Roberson and Kansas State in that ballgame. Third and 14, especially the way they came back. Kingsbury, and it's out of bounds, trying to get it to Mickey Peters. Well, you know what they're going to do. They've already gone for it on fourth down six times now. You gotta, and you've got to get the ball in the end zone because the first down is all the way down to the one yard line. By the way, that last play that we just saw Eric Clemens looking back at the Kansas State Oklahoma game, that was one of the great gadget plays I've seen in some time. And that was a good gadget play. They threw to the up man in the punt formation, but they stacked three guys out there wide. And Kansas State didn't have any timeout, so they couldn't stop the clock because they had a formation they didn't know how to defend. Two of six on their fourth down tries. Kingsbury against a three-man rush. Running out of time, Williams can't hang on. Texas takes over. And Carl Reese really has to be pleased after oh, yeah. getting up all the yards last week against Houston. The opposite on the other sideline for Mike Leach. The defense has come through, though, with coordinator Carl Reese of the Texas Longhorns. Dominating performance by the Texas Longhorns on both sides of the ball tonight with 9.19 to play. We welcome you back to Austin, Texas. Joel Myers, James Lofton, Eric Clements, and Chris Hitt staying in the game. Floating on proposed Scape. Scape caught five last week. That reception is fourth. Guys getting a workout brought down by Osalio Hansen. More for the guys next week to defend. Don't want to show those guys too much on No, you want to show them a lot. Confuse them? You, you, I mean, you got a lot. Show them, show them your hand. You got a royal flush, say, hey, this is what we got, beat it. They're watching it live tonight. There's no doubt about that. Chris Sims now 19 of 23. Ivan Williams just following his full back. Stiff arming his way to a first down. I like the way he followed Trestle that wow. time. Or Chad Stevens, rather, his fullback in there for Trestle, well, the junior from Cypress, Texas. And the two fullbacks, Matt Trestle and Chad Stevens, are almost interchangeable. Greg Davis said, you know, they won't run the ball. There's nothing wrong with that. We do the Denver Broncos type thing. They'll block. They're good lead blockers. And they may catch They may catch one or two passes a year. But they go in there. They lead block. They protect when they're in and pass coverage. These guys, the fullbacks, Chad Stevens, 36. Matt Trestle, 46. They do their jobs. 151 yards now for Ivan Williams. Quick hitter. And chop him down in a hurry. Rodney McKinney, the first one in there, got him low. 
It's the new show that everybody's been talking about, the best damn sports show, period. Sports comedy, commentary, constantly updated scores and highlights. What more could you want from the show? Introducing the best damn sports show, period, weeknight, 7.30 and 11.30, only on Fox Sportsnet. Check your local listings. Well, coming in, James, I said to you, I thought the key was Ivan Williams getting 25 carries. I also said, though, no. I thought Benson get about 14, 15 yep. carries. Ivan Williams now has 26. Just play keep away from Cliff Kingsbury. Sims on second and long. Scape has his fifth grab. Paul McClain to the free safety who is the Southwestern Bell Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last week made the stop. But plenty of time if to you look pound over things. the defensive lineman with the run, they don't react when it's just a straight drop back. Look at the pocket, the lane that he has to throw the football through. Joel Myers, no, he couldn't complete one. He could throw it. He couldn't complete it. Uh, you don't realize the <laughs> strength in my arm. <laughs> That's a great job by those guys up front. Cedric Benson in the eye. Sims wants more, though. He wants Roy Williams in a jump ball, and he, he overthrows everybody. Guy. He threw to the wrong guy. C.J. Johnson he, on the coverage. He had Tony Jeffrey, number 12, just flying up the field. Tony realizes it over on the other side. Here's Tony Jeffrey. He goes, and that's the guy you should throw the ball to. Because Roy Williams is thinking, yeah, throw it to Tony Jeffrey. I'm just going to jog down the field. Look at Jeffrey. Leave it. And then Roy Williams says, oops, it's coming my way. Second and 10 at the 43 of the Red Raiders. Tony Jeffrey's thinking, I could have had a touchdown. Where's Major? I'm going to go talk to Major Applewhite. He thought he was coming in. He was on the bench with him for a while over there. <laughs> He'd already been with Major Applewhite. Cedric Benson dropped by Lawrence Lutgen, the middle linebacker. You know, the, the, the funny dynamics about a team, though, you, you only have so many balls to go around. You get B.J. Johnson and Roy Williams. They're your starters. With Sloan Thomas and Tony Jeffrey, you're going to need them to make plays for you down the line. And that's when you kind of throw them a bone also. You, we've seen both skates come on. Brock Edwards, Mike Jones, other tight ends, get everybody involved. You talk about it in basketball, but in football, get everybody their touches. Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan's son, is in the slot there. Caught his first last week against Houston. Let's see if Sims is going that way. No, back the opposite side. And it's Sloan Thomas with his first catch of the night. A little zip on that one, too. First down, Longhorns. We just saw that last graphic with the numbers where we saw incredible balance. 204 yards passing before the last one, and then the great ground game as well. The ultimate for Greg Davis, our offensive coordinator. First and 10 is brought to you by the American Red Cross. Please help assist the victims of the terrorist attack, their families as well. You can help right now. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW. 1-800-HELP-NOW, or by visiting redcross.org. It's amazing when you look at what people across America have been doing and how they've been reaching out to those families who were affected. Victor Reich bolting inside the 15 down to the 13 for nine. The forgotten man. It was the starter out of Bowie High School here in Austin. Ike's only a junior. And he's now third on the depth chart behind Williams and Benson. Been a mismatch overall in the second half, especially when it comes to the commitment to the ground game. But let's remember Tech had to play catch up. They were down. By two scores at the break, 21 to 7. Jeffrey, the motion man. Ike trying to run over people. First and goal to the eight. Running right with the ball in his left hand. Yeah, it's almost not fair to put in a fresh set of legs to go against a defense that's getting worn down a little bit. But nobody said football is a game where you have to play fair. You play your guys. You talk about playing your best 11. Mac Brown is able to play his best 22 on offense. Talked about his depth along the offensive line, tight ends, running backs three deep. He's got a lot of riches here. Next week's game is going to tell us a lot whether or not it could be the year of the Longhorn. Three national championships, their last coming 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago. Victor Ice, down to the five, grabbed a face mask. Kevin Curtis, a strong safety, in on the hit. 
Now will it be a cage grabbed? Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Penalty be half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Remains first down. And I bring that up, will it be the year of the Longhorn? Because they only leave the state twice. Well, the funny thing is, Mac Brown said, everybody's talking about national championship, national championship. Been over 30 years. He said it has been since, I believe, 1983 or 1984 since we opened up 4-0. But everybody keeps talking about national championship. He said, Let's take one step at a time. And that's what he's really trying to address with his team. One game at a time. Be prepared. Play your best game every week. Time out of the field. We'll come right back to Austin. 4.54 to play. A very impressive night for both units of Mac Brown squad. And I only bring it up because of the favorable schedule. If they can beat Oklahoma next week in the Cotton Bowl, and let's face it, Oklahoma's undefeated for the defending national champs as well as they got by Kansas State 38-37 today. But this is the deepest Longhorn team they've had in many, many years. And they do have that favorable schedule. Plus, the Big 12 title game, it's at Texas Stadium in Arlington this year. In Irving, rather. Well, next week, triple header of college football. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Well, first of all, will be USC matching up with 13th ranked Washington in a Pac-10 battle. Iowa State will be there, James, taking on number four, Nebraska. Nebraska, 17-game home winning streak going. And Heisman hopeful Joey Harrington leads sixth ranked Oregon into Arizona for a Pac-10 showdown. It all begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific right here on Fox Sports Night. Let's check in with Eric Clemens. Eric. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Well, UT's practice fields are named after a local attorney and a celebrated World War II veteran, Frank Dennis. And Frank Dennis has really helped them in the wake of the September 11th attacks on America. He attends every practice, saying God bless America with the team last week, and has told these young men stories of what war is really like. As you guys know, guys in the age ranges of college football players have no idea about war, and if this country does indeed go to war many of guys in their age ranges will be affected so they were very attentive when Frank Denny has spoke to them all week long and continues to speak to them about the impending battles that this country might partake in guys all right Eric good thought we forget how young these young men are Applewhite has taken over Ike stays in Shut down at the one. You heard the cheers in the background for Major Applewhite, the all-time Longhorn leader in passing yardage. Touchdown tosses. Relegated to a backup role now. I'll tell you, though, he's still number one with the fans here. Yeah, but Mac Brown said, he said, we have the two best quarterbacks in the country. Nobody's better one and two than we are. And you really can't argue with them. Mac, uh, Major Applewhite, the Big 12 co-offensive player of the year in 1999, and Chris Sims, cover boy. Ike, badly, he's in. Touchdown, Texas. The reserves getting their opportunity. And, and that's a nice reward for Victor Ike. You know, he's been moved to number three, still returns kickoffs for the ball club. But, you know, when you're number three, you're thinking, well, I got big guy in front of me I got the new legend and Cedric Benson in front of me I need to go do my job because you never know when injuries are going to strike a team you never know when you're going to be called on and you have to be ready long season as Mangum converts on the extra point the blowout continues 42 7 Texas all over Texas Tech I'm definitely getting hungry with all these Burger King scoring drives for Texas tonight. 85 yards on the last one. Victor Ike with his first score of the night. That is five rushing touchdowns for the Texas Longhorns. And Texas dominating on the ground tonight. As Victor or Ivory McCann waits for the kickoff inside the five will take it to the three. They're waiting for him. Cleaning up. Bo Trahan, he has been involved in a ton of special teams tackles. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Kia Sierra, one company, countless solutions. And by Renaissance, get the good stuff. 
Beautiful night at kickoff, 81 degrees, only 30% humidity. Just about a 20 degree difference from four weeks ago when we were here for opening night. Fox Sports Net College football. I've never seen a guy sweat as much as you did that night. That was because of the guy I was working with. Had nothing to do with the temperature. <laughs> and for the sack is Kingsbury was waiting. Derek Jan Johnson, another time he gets in. Finally, a sack and a big one at that for the true freshman from Waco. Closing speed. A loss of nine, almost ten. Bringing up second and 20. Insult to injury with a shot like that this late. Kingsbury wants the screen. Ricky Williams had some room early. Gets the yardage back after the sack. To so about the 14, Tyrone Jones tracking him down the strong side linebacker. Kingsbury with his 40th completion of the night. 260 yards passing. They've got better than 300 yards in total offense. Fourth downs, that's been a problem. They've had to try on too many fourth downs. Well, they just haven't been able to get the run after the catch. Talked about how well Texas has tackled in the secondary, but you have to credit Texas Tech. The guys haven't turned the ball over when they've been hit hard. And Kingsbury hangs on there and took a huge hit. Coming through, Maurice Gordon with the pop, the senior from Mesquite, Texas. Just a wave of orange coming out of men. And it's interesting, we've seen no blitzing basically tonight at all from Texas. Kingsbury's been back in the gun, and they have elected more than 90% of the time not to gamble. They haven't brought people. Yeah. And this is an area where Texas has been very good coming after the punter. And there's an opportunity here if they want to go after it to go after Great House. Three blocks over the last four games going back to last season. Vasher waits at the 45. They had a block last week of a field goal attempt. Short Cannon punt. Thornton got that. That was a low wobbler. It'll die at about the 38. We'll come right back for the final minute 53. A very impressive performance by the number five team of the nation, the Texas Longhorns. We have this knowledgeable crowd of better than 82,000 chanting beat OU while we were away. They're ready for the Cotton Bowl next week in the matchup with Oklahoma. Out of the backfield. Running for the first time tonight. Sneezy Beltran. And our Dr. Pepper player of the game, Chris Sims, 21 of 26. He was an accurate general this evening, James. If you're trying to pick a highlight for Chris Sims, it could be almost any play, but this toss to Roy Williams hitting him in full stride, and then Williams dancing in, and there it is again, over the middle, Bo Skate. They also rushed for two touchdowns. They weren't very long, but he got in anyways. They all count just the same. Beltran again down to the 30. We remind you the executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of College Football Saturday are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fouts. The senior vice president of field operations is Andrea Berry. Final minute of play, one more snap for the Longhorns to run it out. And look like a strong number five of the nation with a bullet by their number. After this convincing victory against a solid opponent in Texas Tech. So lumber on Beltran. And that hit Josh Ratliff. So that'll do it. 4-0 start for the first time. This is 1983 for the Texas Longhorns. And what a big way to open their league season, the very, Big 12 Conference. Very solid performance, but a, a different team awaits them next week. And I, I think there's a little payback coming because you heard the number 63 whispered a little bit. OU hung 63 points on Texas last year. Mac Brown seeking out Mike Leach. And Texas Tech will get ready to regroup. 
They just face, though, a team that really beat them up in the trenches tonight. Texas got the ground game going. You talked about the shots that the front four and the front seven took early, and that was the key in the first half. 21 in the first half of the Longhorns, 21 in the second. Balance all the way around. We'll be right back to Austin. Cliff Kingsbury did all he could, 40 of 57, 260 yards, but the balance of Texas was the difference. Yeah, the score is not as close as it was in last year's ball game, but I think Texas Tech has moved up a little bit. Now for Texas next week, can they have the same balance that they did last week? Join us next week, triple header of college football Saturday. It all kicks off at 3.30 Eastern. USC taking in number 13, Washington. Then Iowa State battles number four, Nebraska. Oregon at Arizona. Check your local listings for the games, the times in your area. And coming up next, for most of you, the National Sports Report. Brothers, stay tuned for your regional sports report. Now for James Lofton and Eric Clemens, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us in Austin. College football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net. So long, everybody, from the Lone Star State.